Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another show. We got uh, got to kind of have a fun night tonight. I'm sure we've got plenty of uh, little short clips to play for you. And uh, yeah, I've come, I'm coming off of a what a back to back to back. I mean, we did two shows on Tuesday, and we did a long show last night, almost for three hours. So, uh, and tonight's show will probably be about three hours again. So, I, I appreciate everybody hanging out and uh, toughing it out for all these uh, these these long shows, long evenings. But uh, you know, it's always worth it. It's always fun to get to hang out. And so tonight, of course, we're going to start off with Mr. Layton. He uh, he had another drink and draw. Not too long ago, I think maybe 10 hours ago it ended, and uh, he's had an eventful week. He's uh, been running around doing a few things, so we're going to get started with him tonight like we always do, And uh, but of course, before I bring him in, we've got the the clip for you to see what happened at the Drink and Draw last night and maybe what else he's been up to this past week. And action. Action. Hey guys, here we are. Uh, at, this is a really Joey and my favorite restaurant. We favorite like restaurant. Once a week. Uh, what's the name of the place? I don't know. Neither does the know either. Uh, anyway, this is my favorite dish in Korea. And I'm going to, I'm going to, we haven't done a food thing in a while, but Joey, you know, like you see all the different beautiful sides. This, these are marinated clams. Um, this is a, uh, like a regular salad with some a root. This is uh, some sort of fish, uh, fermented fish. Mm. Obviously, the pancake is a little bit spicy, pancake, but yeah, this is nachi bokum. And nachi bokum is, and I'm going to show you, is it's baby squid and cabbage. See, like this? And let's, let's just try a little bit. I it. it is super spicy, super delicious, man. And this is like my, my favorite dish in all of Korea. Absolutely. So now we only have an hour, half hour till drink control yeah. starts. So if you ever come to this restaurant, you can have this or any of these other great things on the menu. There you go. Look at that. All right, there's our food statement, drink and draw coming up. All right, I got the nachi bokum in me. Well, already, we're ready for drink and draw another episode. Mm -hmm. Here is MPO. Our uh, president of Drink and Draw, who just did introductions to the crowd that's here. Here's Simone, who's just wedging her eyeball in here because she, that's what she does. All right, anyway, so, Gabriel, tell them what we're doing tonight. So we're going to draw anything related to night wing. Why? Because yesterday was night wing's birthday. That's right. Happy birthday, Dick Grayson. So we're drawing anything related to Nightwing, Robin, uh, uh, Burt Ward, <laughs> anybody who's played him, uh, or whatever, uh, uh, any iteration of the character Nightwing. It's happy birthday, Nightwing, a very special uh, drink and draw. So let's let's go make some fun pictures, okay? Let's go. All right, guys, we'll see you. Yay. All right, so another episode of Drink and Draw is underway. Yeah. With uh, our two favorite girls, Bimo uh -huh. and Simone. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And Hannah's still here. And we got cousin Dave back from the uh, wilds of Utah. California. Well, you're in California? I'm in California. Okay. I thought you were in I thought you were from Utah. My brother lives in Utah. Okay. <laughs> Close enough. Okay. At least it's not Idaho. <laughs> Sorry, Joey. <laughs> John, how you doing there? What is that? Uh, this is Nightwing Duck, uh, also known as Duck Grayson. Duck Grayson. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Duck Grayson. Oh, you got that one, huh? You got three words of English, but he laughs at that one, okay? Uh. How you doing today? You racking your brain here? Okay. She's right on it, though. I love that about her. You go right to it. Hey, Pio, what were you, what were you doing tonight, man? Uh, Robin and Nightwing. Oh, you're going to do a split? Yeah. Oh, like a split cover thing. Okay. Oh, by the way, here's this thing from last week. You finally finished it. <laughs> so there we go. And again, we have a guest star too, right? Say, say hi, hi to hi. everybody there, at the comic art fans. All right. Good crowd tonight, Joey. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. 
Hey, gentlemen. Hey, Joey. Hey, it was, it was my bad. They don't. I forgot they don't send you a link, so I forgot to forward it to you. <laughs> ah, see, we didn't think Joey was going to make it. It was it my fault. It was my fault, Bill. I did it during uh, when you were showing the clip, so whatever. So, uh, I, and to make a correction, Nachi Bokum is actually Baby Octopus, not Squid. I said Squid on the thing. It's actually Baby Octopus uh, and, and Cabbage in a very, very spicy red sauce. It is like my absolute favorite. We, we probably have it once a week, huh, Joey? About once a week, yeah. Right, so like it's, before, a regular, yeah. it's become a regular Thursday ritual. Yeah, it has. And it's like, a, it is a very yummy one. The sides always mm. change. That's the great thing. Though. You, never, you never know what you can get. So, yeah, it's little baby octopus. You know, it's super hot, spicy they're cooked. stuff. They're, they're cooked. They're not raw. Oh, no, these aren't raw. No, yeah, you know, it's like, we're going to do raw. Like, kind of like, uh, like flame broiled, too. So some places you go, they've got a nice smoky flavor, too. Oh, you're going to love it because Sunday we're going to go out to dinner and uh, we're going to go have a live octopus. So you're going to see me eat the actual, you saw it once before, but you're going to see me put the squirming tentacles in my mouth. All right. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> yeah, guys, I know. Well, welcome to my mouth, America. Mm -hmm. all, all sorts of nasty <laughs> shit comes out and in. <laughs> oh, Tom Layton. Oh, boy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Life in Classic Korea is dull. Listen, life in Korea is no, never dull. Let me tell you why. All right? I'm Jim listening. Lee's in town. Mm -hmm. Jim Lee came to town uh, on, on DC business. He's here in town. He texted me. He said, you know, hey, Bob, what's up? He invited me to come to bre breakfast. The only time he had free was right now. And I said, and I want the, the viewers out there to realize, I said, no. I said, look, Bill and Castro have stuck with me while I traveled around the world. I'm not going to, to give up my segment, even for the president of DC Comics, man. So I stood him up. I said, well, you know, he's, you know, you're coming back in August. You know, and I said, well, we'll get together then. But I have to do my show. I have to do the show. Yeah, but what did he say? He's like, what's that? He doesn't even know what. Oh, no, he wasn't real really familiar with CAF, so I, I cued him in. So what I'm hoping is when he comes next time and he's not on DC business, I can get him on the show with us. Yeah, I've always wanted to have Jim uh, Lee. Jim and I have been friends for 30 years. I mean, I knew him from back in the uh, Marvel days and then Valiant. We we did a lot of, you know, we did Deathmate with Image, but Steve Mazarski and, and, and Jim were great friends. Uh, so, uh, you know, he would always pop into the offices. You know, and of course the kids in the in the bullpen would go nuts whenever Jim Lee walked into the place. You know, but uh, Jim's a great guy. I saw him at the Birds of Prey premiere. You know, and I, I talked to him a little bit about the Korean Huntress movie coming up. I can't talk about it, but um, so, uh, but yeah, I want you. To, I want everybody out there to know that I stood Jim Lee up to be with Bill Cox. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I told you before the show, I probably would have canceled the show to, to go. Have <laughs> yes, and I would have stood you all most, <laughs> most guys would. But the thing of it is like, you know, hey, you know, I know Jim. And he, like you said, when he comes back, he says, we'll get together. We'll get together. And so, you know, I'm hoping to get him in the shop and get him uh, on the show as well, uh, if possible. If he's back, if he's not doing DC right now, he's so busy. And I know how that is when you're working. And, you know, you're on a business trip, and they have almost every minute of it planned. And he was trying to squeeze me in there. But Joey could tell you, rush hour traffic on a Friday, getting from here to Gangnam, mm -hmm. is, is like a 90-minute trip if you don't know the trains. You know, it's just like, I, I probably, and then I, by the time I got there, I would I would have had, what, 40 minutes with him? It's like you know, California so. traffic, but there's a bridge involved. <laughs> yeah, the, you got to go over the Han River, man. Which is not the river. So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, but made anyway, a good choice all right, I made a good choice because uh, my loyalty is to you, Cass, and the fans here at CAF. Yeah, Marcus says Jim has a helicopter. He could have picked you up. You think? Well, that's true too. <laughs> the DC helicopter. Yeah, it's a bat copter. <laughs> You got one of those. <laughs> it's on loan to Jim, yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. no, listen, like I said, I love Jim, and it, it's like it's great. We'll see him again in August, so it, no, no biggie. That's so right. Now the show must go on, and okay. we had a hell of a show last night. We, as you, you saw in the thing, we celebrated. It was uh, Nightwing because tell them about Nightwing here in Korea. 
So yeah. when we had Batman Day in September, which is an official like store event that DC pro- promotes and stuff, uh, Nightwing has a really big following in Korea. A lot of it's girls that that like his butt and stuff. But there's also when they did some of the localizations. It's fictional of- butt. Okay, it's fictional butt, right? Okay, yeah. it's like I yeah. remember. Yeah, there is no actual Nightwing butt. Okay. Man, just kind of <laughs> took took me out of the hole of the night. Sorry, you can't ahead. do anything but picture his rear end. Right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, it it Joey is breaking into a sweat right uh, now. No, we're, no, we're both. Joey and I are exhausted. Last night was exhausting. You know, you, you can tell. <laughs> but, anyway, we had a lot of people asking, "What are you going to do a Nightwing day?" And I said, "Well, there's DC doesn't do a Nightwing day, but I can figure something out." So I looked up when his birthday was, and I guess in the comics it's March twentieth. So we did a happy birthday, Nightwing, and I made uh, I made some uh, uh, thing. W- one of my friends is a graphic designer, and he's done stuff for K-pop groups. And we, uh, I had him make a thing for me that was like these. There's these billboards in the subways and on the the buses that are like for different K-pop idols' birthdays. Mm-hmm. So they'll be like, "Oh, happy birthday, Jungkook," or something, and people will take pictures. So. I had him uh, make up like a pretty realistic looking happy birthday Nightwing like <laughs> tribute b- billboard thing. And we uh, we were advertising with that. And then it uh, it promoted well. So we did the sale on Nightwing comics. We've had a bunch of people come in. And then Drink and Draw was really big too. And now yeah, other people are making that. their own like happy birthday Dick Grayson fan art <laughs> that's going up on Twitter right now. So... It's it's like the we'll, we'll do it again next year. The, the event has some pretty good legs. So yeah, you, pu- you pushed a lot of paper last night. You were yeah, busy we did well. Counter. Yeah, and I, I cleared out a, a bunch of <laughs> dead Nightwing stock too. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, well, that's there all. You know, go. I wonder if they did that in the states though. That's the thing. So uh, Joey. I just did it here, but- Mm-hmm. Let's show them some of the stuff from last night. All right, so we had a pretty good turnout. There's there's some people I think they didn't understand to leave their art and dream draws because there are some really good drawings I saw too that that are they not. They took them home, yeah, yeah. They took I, them home because <laughs> they liked them enough, but yeah. So uh, yeah, and then there's people that came like like this one uh, is a uh, one of my regular customers. She's uh, she is really good at doing. Yeah, she's business. never she's always busy, so she never has time to hang out. And then she stayed in Drew, and it was. Yeah, she had a, a pretty nice. So that's all original too. I mean, she just like just out of yeah. her head, boom. You know, I mean, I said, yeah, you need to come back more often, girl, because she's got yeah. the juice, no doubt about oh, it. Yeah. The uh, uh, yeah. Tom Layton Nightwing. Yeah, I, I, there's a cleaned up version on uh, uh, my commission uh, stuff from Casra, I think. Um, yeah, that was pretty nice. This well, is, I always try. I always do something commercial, Jan. To check that. Out. Yeah, there you go, Joy. Yeah, we're getting some light light. There, you go. Okay, there you go. Then, uh, and then here's the the, the finished uh, Nightwing Duck. You see if I can. Duck Grayson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're getting a lot of glare. Uh, there you go. Yeah, not that's all glare, but. So. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I moved to a different location because uh you remember guys yeah, every one of these dark. things is no, available right. available through Dyson Comics Cafe because the money goes to charity. So anybody watching wants to wants to purchase yeah, any we'll of these uh, we'll uh auction these off. But they can buy them now if they wanted, right? I love yeah. that. That's Simone. That's Simone's the sick girl. It's, sick girl. it's, it's Simone and Bemo. And Bemo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they teamed up on one. And then uh, uh, Dave did his birth of Nightwing <laughs> so from, a, from a robin's egg. <laughs> Very interpretive. Oh, yes. oh, we, got, we got some sick guys there. Okay. I, no doubt and then it. this was our other our other uh, guest artist was Sungan Yoon. And uh, Sungan, yeah, he, he, he does covers. So he has a, uh, he has a, a really recognizable style. And he's going to be doing a, uh, a a store exclusive cover with us, and uh, him and Bob will do one for the uh, the upcoming Gotcha Man comic from Gotcha Man. I'm going to be doing Battle of the Planets. You know, I'm going to do a special cover. I think 
My first time doing them. You know, anytime I, I can ask, have you never drawn them before? Hey, this is the guy that did Chisasaurus Rex, okay? So, you know, <laughs> it's like I got to add to my repertoire because I only did one Nightwing comic, and Joey tried to order it in time for the, the, the uh, event last night, but it didn't show up. That's part of the trouble. Yeah, I didn't get here in time. Yeah. Up now you're stuck with with right. chain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little slower getting stuff here from the States when he needs, uh, you know, something like that. I did one Nightwing job. With, so, you know, you know me, I've done one story of about every character imaginable. So, yes, you have. Uh, yeah. So there you go. You know, it's no Cheezosaurus Rex, but hey, what the hell, you know. <laughs> Can never live that down. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I, 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 I listen. I, I talked to Spencer. And I said, "You know, the most expensive Bob Layton comic you can buy is uh, graded is Cheezosaurus Rex." I mean, Joey showed me. You know, and it's like uh, it's crazy. But yeah, Battle of the Planets is awesome. I've never. I remember it uh, when it was Battle of the Planets. It's now got you, man. But I'm going to do a special a, a variant cover just for Joey's shop, so that'll be available. When are we doing that, Joey? Forget. Uh, it's it's coming up. I'm getting ready to do a, uh, a uh, the marketing campaign for the the covers and stuff, and and uh, we'll have some other uh, some uh, some other side items too that I'm working on getting out there too. I'm talking to some. Oh, people. Okay. Well, I, I also, Bill, I wanted to talk to the CAF uh, viewers too because apparently they're they're doing a Kirby exhibition in in LA this summer. A big Kirby okay. exhibition I, or whatever. I'm not about that. No, I've just gotten information about because they were asking me whether I wanted to contribute or actually go come to LA and uh, uh, be there for the uh, Kirby exhibition mm -hmm. uh, and bring some of the Kirby stuff that I've inked over the years, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and I was going to say to those people out there that have Jack Kirby art that may want to uh, put it on loan for this exhibit or whatever, I'll have more information about that, you know. Uh, uh, was there's organizing it, but I think it's going to be a great thing to do to honor Jack Kirby, because let's face it, who isn't influenced by Jack Kirby? But I just found out about it this morning. Okay, you know, it's an invitation about it, and I said, "Well, I will talk to the CAF fans because I'm sure there are a lot of guys. You know, probably own a Kirby page or two, right?" I have one. Kirby there you go. Yeah, the, but, uh, then, uh, Kirby Thor. But I, I know from being on the boards and you know being on, in the galleries that there are a lot of Kirby stuff, and you know. Every chance I get to ink a Jack Kirby pencil, when I find it, I do it, you know, because I, mm -hmm. you know, I absolutely love taking it and, and, and doing my thing with it. So, uh, you know, keeping that dynamics, but, you know, adding stuff and embellishing it, you know, it's like, it's great fun. It's great fun. What were you going to well, say, Joey? Oh, I had a Basset Hound named Kirby. <laughs> well, I'll see okay. if they... I don't yeah. know if I would let you throw an ink on him or anything. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or whatever. Right. Yeah. Well, you should reply to whoever sent you that press release and let them know that uh, they should forward, forward, or you know, or loop me in on the uh, announcements for it, so we can help. Promote Absolutely, it. I will. I will do that. Yeah, the gal's name is Sherry, and like I said, I just got an email from her, and uh, I'm in a gallery or something. It's I I forget where the exhibition is, but I'll have, like I said, I'll have more information next week after I talk to her. Okay. But you know, like I said. If they're there, I said, well, I, you know, I, I do a podcast where it's nothing but art collectors. So it's, it's it'll be possible to, to maybe get some Kirby art on loan for the exhibition, you know, as long as it's insured and all taken care of or whatever like that, you know, uh, I will find out from her because it's a big deal because let's face it, it's, it's Kirby. Well, I'm, I'm certain there's a lot of uh, OA collectors in the LA area that could be probably... Very yes. easily, you know, contribute a few pieces to it. Well, so. and like I said, as I get more information, we will coordinate that. But speaking of drawings, uh, I did a few this week. Yes, you did. Let's see. Yes. Uh, well, we... uh, this is one of the things Spencer suggested to me. This is Frank Miller's Dark Knight meets Spider-Man, <laughs> which makes more sense. You know, when I thought about it as I was doing it, it's like, you know that's a that's a more even matchup than than him against Superman because you know that should have been like a two page book. It's like hi, I'm Superman, Squish. You know, exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Batman, Spider Man seemed like a, a thing, so it was kind of fun. Even though that tower, I had, it's the second time I've had to do that tower. 
uh, uh, it's crazy. But uh, uh, yeah, this is for one of Spencer's people. So uh, it's uh, yeah, Frank Miller's Dark Knight meets uh, Spider Man. It was fun. I had a good time with it. All right, and what do we got? Oh. Well, well, this this is interesting. I've never done a recreation of this cover, and one of the things about that cover, if the original was one of the very first covers I ever did for Marvel. It was like an inventory thing. And mm -hmm. the anatomy was terrible. I mean, you look at it, and the legs were too long, and it was like the, the head's in a weird spot, and whatever. It, it always bothered me that that cover was just, in my eyes, hideous. And, and like Joey said, he never noticed it because it was all very busy and dynamic. But I said, you know what? I would love to do a recreation of it where uh, I better drawn, <laughs> you know, it would just... Uh, so uh, this is a new, improved version of Iron Man 134. I'm going to go back and look at all that bad anatomy from the original. Though. Oh, no. I mean, it was one of my very first covers. I mean, that I penciled. Uh -huh. I had mean, just a couple beforehand. This is back in 78 or something or, or whatever. And it was originally an inventory cover. And then we built a story around it later. Uh, but it, it was like... It always kind of one of those things that sticks. It's like that leg missing uh, on the Iron Man 117 that drives me nuts. But this was one of those things where the drawing was just so bad. So I said, you know what? Just for my own satisfaction, I'm going to go back and redraw it and fix the anatomy and everything like that. So this is a much more better, improved version of that classic cover. It was fun. Well, that's from last night. Yeah, I just I, I just decided to clean it up for you guys, you know, so you can get a better look at it. And you could buy it from Joey, you know, for for nice and you know, comics. Yes, you know, I don't I do very few DC characters, as you know, you know, over the years. You know, I did my career was very short there. So uh that was my contribution to last night. I always do the crassly commercial stuff because I want Joey to be able to sell them. So uh I'll leave the funny stuff. And this was for our friend Josh Flanders. I don't know if Josh is watching because I don't get the feed when we're on here. Oh. But uh, Josh, he saw that She-Hulk cover at OAX. Somebody had it for sale there, the original. But they wanted way too much money for it. Yeah, Josh, there you are. Hi, brother. I uh, hope you like it, man. I was going to tell you, this was kind of a bitch to do because what I had to do was do her on a separate page, then print her like in green ink on top of the drawing and then go in with a, a paintbrush and paint all the detail you know uh it took it was a kind of a mixed media adventure but uh, it, it we i pulled it off you know i think so well josh, well, josh is very that's all it counts if Josh and Sherry love it, that's all that matters. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that one was a little bit of a work. But I also tried to improve the color a little bit too from the original as well. So uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Josh, what were they asking for that cover? Do you, do you remember uh, by any chance? Um, I didn't see it. I know. It was, I, I took a look at it because it was a walk down memory lane for me. They had lost. Uh, they had lost the uh, She Hulk part. Uh, the overlay because it was done originally on an overlay and held it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, apparently they did not have the original overlay anymore. They were asking me if I had it, and I said uh, no. Five, they wanted five k for it or more. Okay, well that's uh, well then you got a bargain on this one. <laughs> but, but yeah, without the original She Hulk drawing, it's 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 not worth what some of the other covers from that era right. are. No, I mean yeah the. Uh, but Marvel does that cover with the uh, Iron Man on it. Yeah, lose the overlay. You know, uh, it's like. Uh, but that again was a really early cover of mine. But uh, thanks for uh, Josh. It was it was a challenge, but it was worth it. It was fun, and like I said, I'm sending a package off. Joe, Joey sends my care packages off to Spencer every other, every other week, so we'll we'll be sending it out next week. Okay, so just be patient, and it'll get to you. Yeah, I think so, it was at auction, wasn't it? Wasn't that the, the Comic Connect auction? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, but uh, It sold you know, for $15,525. That's what they were asking? No, that's what it sold for at auction uh, just a few days ago. Oh, oh, oh wow. 15000 Yeah, here, I can share the screen with you so you can see no, it. No, 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 I don't want to see it. It just makes yeah. me sad. <laughs> <But> yes, <laughs> it, it sold three, three nights ago. 
had 35 bids on it, went for $15,525, even without the uh, original art for She-Hulk. Okay, so if somebody comes to me and wants me to recreate just the, the She-Hulk overlay for for them for that thing, I'm going to charge them $15,000. <laughs> right, and that's like number one Marvel fan. It, it actually, because you know, at, at Comic Connect, they charge the buyers a fifteen percent premium, as well. So it is actually closer to uh, well, what is that? Well, Probably about seventeen and a whoever, half. Whoever bought it, if they're watching the show, if you want me to create the overlay, so you'll have the complete thing, uh, you know, you know, talk to me, uh, and we'll, I'll, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to charge you, but okay. <laughs> so we'll see what you can do. Because you should have the whole cover, right? You know? You so it's better to have the recreated overlay than nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? I did it on vellum. So, you know, you can see through it or whatever. Uh, that's what we did back then with those those color holes. But, uh, um, well, Jason's there you go. the total on uh, Comic Connect is with the buyer's premium. Okay, so they must update it after the fact. Okay, well, that's still wow, Josh. You should have bought it at five, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, Joey, uh, we have a signing this, this Sunday, too, right? We, we do. We so, uh, so, we have Danny Kim, and so he uh, he's he's kind of a young rising star in comics, and he's one of just a couple Korean or maybe. It's at least for DC and Marvel, but there's like a handful of Korean artists here that actually do page work. But yeah, and, page uh, work. I'm saying interiors. He mm -hmm, does interiors. Yeah. And so, really uh, damn good stuff. It's colored ghastly. I mean, I mean, if I was him, I would just commit. Yeah, when you see the originals, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I think he's gonna bring his originals just so people can see what what is, what part of is it, it with like. color in this industry. I mean, you can count the good colorists on the fingers of one hand. No wonder you guys collect black and white artwork. Holy sure. shit. I mean, the colorist, I was looking through this book, and if I was Danny Kim, I would have killed the colorist and then myself. Well, you know? He came to drink and draw after he got the uh, got his comps for it. I said, oh, yeah, I ordered a whole bunch of your of your Ghostwriter book for the signing, and he just kind of looked down. It's like, I don't like it. <laughs> it's, well, I told Joey what he needs to do is find a good Korean colorist and convince Marvel to, to allow him to color the stuff, do the, all the art, and just send it in finished from from Korea. Uh, that way he has a little more control over it. Because, I mean, it, what he's doing is beautiful, and they're just wrecking mm -hmm. it in the color. I mean, it's – it's and I've had that done a lot in my career where it's just uh, – it, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. When you put your, your heart and soul into it, that's why we got into a discussion about the issue I did with Barry Windsor Smith. And Barry colored it himself. And with a 16 color palette, Barry just colored the bejesus belt out of this thing. You know, I mean, it's like that, it, it stands out as one of the best coloring jobs you'll ever see uh, on the four color process because it was Barry, you know, and Barry knew what to do. He would do stuff that seemed insane when he was doing it, but per it turned out perfect. So it's, it's not the, op you know, it's not, it's, it, you know, it's not the computer that's the problem. It's the operators. You know, they just don't get it. With a full range of color and effects now, they they still can't seem to color anything. They can't figure out that color is part of storytelling. You, are, you, you draw the eye to where the, the, the artist intended to go. They they This guy used, what, four colors in the whole book? You know, four colors. Mm -hmm. you know? I know. Uh, and it's just ghastly, and, and Danny's work is so beautiful. But anyway, um, those pages, uh, does he sell his pages? Uh, I don't think he's sold any yet. Well, we I should get him on Comic Art there. Fans. We, we get we get set him up with a gallery. You know, we'll get him set up with uh, the Comic Art Fans gallery. Where people yeah, I, I, I'll talk to him about it this Ghost Rider pages and see them. Uh, let's set him up with a gallery, you know. Yeah, and then next week's uh, next week's thing, we'll have some footage of the signing, so I can we can take. Some I was just going to ask, you're going to shoot some video uh, on Sunday, yeah. right? Yeah, um, and, uh, we're technical. doing. Uh, we've got CGC signature series available too. I didn't need that what visual just it? yet, Bob. Uh, I'm just doing it for you. <laughs> One thing about Danny, and the same in Korea with a lot of people that studied with Jungi Kim, uh, they like to remark everything, so. Uh, I've tried to I've tried to convince him like 
uh, <laughs> well, you're going to have a lot of people citing. Why don't you do one remark per person? And then after that, if, if they come up to you with like 10 books, remark one and then sign the rest. And he's like, no, I, I think I can do all of them. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, we're going to be there Sunday. I'm going to go there. I'm going to be there to give him moral support. I'm actually, that's my day to teach Simone. So she's coming to the shop. But I'm going to be there for Danny and for, for Joey. Mm -hmm. The moral support, and then we're going to go out and do old boy later. But uh, what I'm saying is, yeah, we'll, we'll do some footage of it for next week's show and, and show, have him bring some of his art so we can show it too. But yeah, part of the whole process of me being in Korea here is trying to promote these guys because there are some great artists here and great up and coming artists. And I want everybody on CAF to be aware of that, you know. Well, let's get him to start a calf gallery if you can. Yeah, yeah. we'll do it. work on it Sunday. Yeah, mm -hmm. should be easy enough, right? I would. I would right, Gil, tell us how easy it is to start your own calf gallery. Well, you just uh, you can you can be registered and posting art within uh, two or three minutes on the site. You know that, Bob. You've been using the site for over 16, 17 years. I know. I, mean, that I don't remember. I'm so old it, now. I can't remember it, that. It, it, <laughs> it was, it was from last I'm week at the Toriyama thing. What's that? What's that? Did, did we show Danny's? Uh, Danny's drawing from last week. Yeah, we, did. we did. I yeah. think we did. It was yeah. it was it's really good. Yeah. So if, if, he, if home, anyone I, did want commissions from him, he's. I brought him home and cleaned it up. So, you know, I wanted it to look really okay. nice. But yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Bill, I'm giving you an opportunity for those those viewers who are, who are new. To I hear you. Uh, it's the, it's the true. How to start their own gallery. Well, once the, once, and I'll tell you, once the app is out there, it's going to be even faster to get your stuff on Cap. That was that's yeah. what they call lead-in. Uh, I know. I, I'm, 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 lead -in, I'm, I'm slow on the lead-ins, Bob. <laughs> you think it, 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 you haven't rubbed off enough on me yet to make me figure out when I'm supposed to catch your what you're throwing at me and just uh, knock it out of the park. You know, tee it up. You're teeing yeah. them up for me, and I'm I'm swinging and missing. By but, the way, Joey, thank you so much for the blueberry bagel, man. It was great this morning. <laughs> coffee. I got to tell you, Joey bagel. got me some blueberry bagels. He and Cleo got me blueberry bagels. So uh, and a toaster. So I was able to actually because I haven't had a bagel and God knows when. Uh, so I had that with my coffee. I had this morning. extra toaster lying around I used to use for drying my socks. So uh, <laughs> it, 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 had, it had a little footy taste to it. Now, now that I think about it, yeah, a little, a little sort of that I eat that, that that's pretty tame. <laughs> Sock lint, pretty tame. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I what else? Remind me never to accept a gift from Joey. That's all. I'm <laughs> So, so Bill, what's on the show today? Uh, I got a I got a video from a uh, comic uh, comic con in in uh, Valencia, Spain. I've got a couple Ooh. packages to open. I get to show Ooh. off a gift that Corey uh, Rust, who's in the chat, sent me. Um, I've got a few other things because I've got a couple hey. other video, video clips to show. Hey, is Jiggy on? Because I. Uh... I haven't seen uh, him in the chat yet. Okay, because uh, we we wrote him back about doing the show in September. I haven't heard anything from him yet. Because uh, Joey and I are going to have some serious swag to be able to take down there. So, all right. And well, if, well, is is, is my is, if Mike Zek's doing the show because he lives there now, right? If Zek is doing the show, it's a big chance for everyone in Manila to get their Secret War signed by two of us, the two pencilers on the thing. Yeah. You know, so exactly. No. Um, uh, I've got J Jiggy on the show on Saturday night, so if we don't hear from All him, all right, you've been kicking the ass for me, okay? <laughs> I will. Joey, no problem. Joey, one of Joey's best friends lives in Manila too, so um, we want to go down there. Marvel's reissuing the Secret Wars with those chromium covers, mm -hmm. so that's going to be a blast. So by the time we get down there, the whole series should be out, right? Or pretty close, right, Joey? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll so have some we Battle of the Planets exclusives too. Yeah, we'll have that the Bob Layton Battle of the Planets uh, Gotcha Man exclusive. You know, I'm kind of looking forward to that because I remember them vaguely, you know, uh, in my youth. So it's going to be kind of fun to. We haven't figured out what I'm going to do exactly with it, but it'll be it'll be a blast one way or another. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, why I'm not? looking forward to it. Yeah, I know it's a little ways off, but still, that'll be pretty cool. So you got your uh, signing on Sunday. You're going to be. Uh, what, are, what are you going to be eating? Uh, squid. Raw octopus. Raw octopus. live octopus. Not squid. Oh, octopus. We're going, oh, boy. Now, you remember our very first in Korea, we showed you a bowl of it squirming, right? What we mm -hmm. didn't show you was Joey and I actually eating the stuff. Because when you put it in your mouth, it's still, the tentacles will cling to the side of your face. <laughs> still trying to save itself. 
Yeah. Well, uh, you, well, we can't wait, can we, ladies? Yeah. And now we got to do it, Joey. <laughs> yeah, Joey can't that's wait. That's, yeah. the, that, that's one of the at our last store and at this store after signings, we always tried to have like the typical place we took everyone. And but uh, it's it. They say it's one of the five most dangerous foods you can eat because of the choking hazard. Because, yeah, if you don't chew them properly and one of those suckers gets stuck in your throat, it'll hang on. So they say, like, blowfish, and there's a few other things that are, like, super dangerous. But this is one of the five most dangerous foods you can eat, apparently. It's only well, dangerous if you don't chew the bejesus out sure of it. They, you know? Make sure you do. Bob. Living on the edge. What are we yeah, going to do? Living on the edge. Danger is my business. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bill, um, we're, we're taking up too much time. We're already over. So, listen, have a great show. Uh, sorry, Jim Lee. You know, you know. We'll Jim see Lee, you uh, yeah, he's. I, I'm sure he's. He, he'll. Well, you know what? Just get him on the show with us next uh, August. That's all. I that's will, all. I, I, we're gonna do. We'll do our best. In the meantime, look, if he shows a drink and draw, he's gonna be on the show anyway, right? Because he's gonna be a drink and draw, uh, <laughs> one way or another. Yeah, he's gonna he'll do that. So, uh, Joey. Try to go home and get some rest at some point because you look as tired as I feel. Last night was pretty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get home early today. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I'm exhausted. All the, all, all the, all the, all the Nightwing like fangirls coming in all week. It, it, I woke up tired. <laughs> Jim is crying. His, no, Jim's already at a meeting. Uh, he, he, as it turns out, meeting with the Fruit Loops. He texted me this morning because the Dodgers and the Padres played here in Korea last night. And the score was 15-11. I go, that sounds like a football score. I go, they don't play in defense on either one of these teams. And he said he was screaming so loud that his he got so many errors that his, he lost his voice halfway through the game. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. So, uh, I, you know. Uh, it's an exhibition game. They're all in the outfield, like, checking their phones. I, that's not an exhibition. I think it's the second game of the season, actually. You oh, know? it's actually it's been a season. Uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. They played yeah, here. Nice. I know that from Farrell, with Skip Farrell, because he's like, uh, you know, Skip is baseball fanatic. And it's hard well, to even know. When their star player arrived at Incheon Airport, like last week or earlier this week, there was a just a giant crowd at the airport. Yeah. For him to, They're to baseball spend, fanatics here, man. Through the, the gate. They have big security and stuff like that there. And it's, I told I told Jim this morning. I said, if only the NFL would play a game here, Joey, you and I would be there in a heartbeat, man. I don't care which teams were playing, you know. Yeah, there'd be there'd be dozens of people watching. Well, I don't care, <laughs> man. It's like uh, I still, you know, it's like I would love. Them I, I think you could get a good crowd. If, the front row yeah, seats would be really. The big cheap. one would be is you if you know they had like a star player was Korean or something, but yeah, but the uh, board was still playing. Then as, as it turned play. out. As it turned out, Jim said this morning, he goes, yeah, it would have worked out anyway. I wound up with a 1030 meeting that they, they, they scheduled before. So I would have gone all the way to uh, gang, Gangnam and then only had about 15 minutes with him. So and cried into a bowl of cereal. Yeah, cry into a bowl of cereal, as I said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> anyway. It don't even taste like fruit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great show. We'll see you next week, okay? Yes, we can't wait to see uh, your shenanigans from the next Next week. Next week, our theme will be time. Characters related to time. I wanted to do that when you guys went through the time change. Mm -hmm. Back then, but Joy had already scheduled the the tribute thing to Akira and then uh, uh, the uh, Nightwing thing. So we're going to do the time one next week. Characters related to time. So send in, right. send in your suggestions. <laughs> All right, guys. I will see you next week. Stay out of trouble. All right. Thanks, Bill. All Have right. a great show. You next see week. you. Enjoy. I'll see you see Sunday. You. All right. Yeah. No, they, they, they those guys are fun, man. They always they almost always take over the show when they're when they're on here. It's always good time. Time bandits, says Rick Welch. You could have like Morris Day in the time, right? I mean, there's a few uh time related folks out there that you could throw in there right uh dr strange could fit in there some way i think um but yeah well let's let's keep things rolling here i had uh actually got a video clip from uh rafael via in spain he has a calf gallery if you uh, saw the email that went out today i linked over to it i don't have a link handy to uh to show you right now but uh, he's been on a, a member of calf for a while 
and uh, he he's in Spain, and he went to this uh, Valencia Comic Fair. So he shot, uh, you know, some real short video. I think it's only about two minutes long. But uh, some artists were there from the green room, and uh, gosh, who was the other rep that was there? Black Diamond. So I don't think he talked. He didn't talk to any of them, but he kind of walked by and filmed some of the stuff. And there was a gallery set up there, so you'll see a few things from it. But uh, you know, it, you know what? A, a show in Valencia looks just like a show in uh, in Chicago or New York or anywhere else. They they don't really change much. But uh, you know, let's take a look at this. And I appreciate uh, Raphael for sending me this. As everybody knows, if you want to send me you know art related clips from shows from galleries anything like that i'm always happy to replay it over here so uh if you're gonna do it shoot it and hit, hit, hit me up bill at comicartfans.com and we will find a way to get it onto the show one way or another here we go So I think those last couple pieces were uh, things that he picked up while he was at the show. So uh, Rafael Avia. Yeah, 15 euros for a commission seemed a little low, Alberto. I think those were, had to have been on sketch cards or something. I, but 15 euro is, I don't know, isn't that like $25? I, I can't remember what the conversion rates are, but I don't think it's two to one. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, again, thank you, Rafael, for shooting that. Sorry it took me two weeks to get it on the show. I've actually forgotten about it after you uploaded it and then I was digging through some old files and found it. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, um, it's been a busy week here. I can get, you know, give you, we've been working a lot on the app where we've got, uh, we've got, got it to a point where I think we're going to show it to a few people tomorrow. Uh, just not, not down, letting them download or anything, but, uh, I've got a, I've got somebody I wanted to kind of demo something for and, and show some stuff off, but it's, uh, it's looking pretty cool. I got a, I actually got a new build of it this evening. It's not quite where I wanted it to be, 
but uh, it's it's getting there. It's exciting. I, the more I the more I actually see it, the more I realize I'm actually going to use it. And I was, you know, it's me. I don't like using apps for mo many things, but I can see using this thing a lot. Um, but the downside is, is like when I'm scrolling through new art, it's like it's easy to find things like, oh, there's a fan artist posting on the site again. I got to tell him he's got to leave or there's a uh, or uh oh, there's a nude that's not locked down. It's it's so much easier to find stuff now um, with that in there. I mean, you figure it like at any point in time during the day, you literally can just open it up, go to the new art page and just start thumbing through it. And it's got uh, we have a like a div layer uh, timestamp above the, the thumbnail. So it's like you can easily see like things that were added in the last 60 minutes. Um, and it's always, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, fun. Maureen's been having to write some special stuff for it. Uh, we, we've got, uh, we got some interesting stuff that we need to write for that. But the cool thing is, is just why, and, and the filtering stuff is awesome. You guys are going to, are going to just love the idea of being able to just go in there and, and hit a, hit a couple filters that are, uh, synonymous in some way and then be able to pull out a result set from that and it, you know it's going to apply to the overall site search too i don't want to give away everything but there's there's like some consolidation things that we're doing in the app you know the apps are supposed to be simpler you don't have to be tooling around and uh uh you know and and going here or there to do things so we're really going to try to make things as uh simple and straightforward as possible so that you know even the people who are new to calf maybe you know uh, are discovering it through the app make it'll be very easy to understand uh you know how to get around and, and look at different stuff so think of the children bill exactly i'm trying to dumb it down man those of you who've been with me for 21 years you you just know how the how the site works where everything's at all of that uh but yeah we're gonna we're gonna clean a few things up i think it's uh it, yeah if, again even for me like i was talking uh, through this the, the main concept to maureen yesterday who was against it initially um, but after I kind of walked her through, this is the way I think it should work. It, it just all made sense. It really, um, it's it, yeah. I could, I can see uh, taking the things that we're going to learn from using uh, for from creating the app and then rolling that back into the redesign when we get to that point too. So it's going to be fun. And what what is Bob Layton saying? He's I forgot. Tell Nikki B that I want to do a space ghost variant cover. Okay. When we see uh, when we see Nick, everybody's going to shout that uh, out so that uh, Mr. Tom Layton can do a Space Ghost variant cover. I like that idea. Uh, oh, and Alberto says he just texted him. I'm sorry, I missed that. But um, but yeah, so we had a fun show last night. I think everybody who was there would agree. I, I got one piece of hate mail. They said it was boring and, and no deals were made. And I had to email them and just say, because uh, I, I didn't know the name. I, I, I was like, are you serious? You know, Mike's never discounted at 30% or more before. So it was actually... Uh, it was Mike was in a really odd uh, form last night. He, he never does stuff like that. But uh, he was, I guess, maybe his dad's 90th birthday party was looming and he felt like, uh, you know, he really needed the wheel and deal. But, you know, that, I, th I thought it worked out really well. I don't think you can do a show like that every month, but uh, it's it works pretty well. I think the last one we did was about six months ago. So, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, as, maybe the older Mike gets, the more... Uh, looser he's going to get with his wheeling and dealing shows. Uh, the show picked up when he did the dive. Yeah, but it, well, we had to get through the um, we had to get through all the the early offers and everything. But sure, the dive stuff was fun, and hopefully we can get him to actually pull a bin out next time and go go through it. Um, but yeah, that was cool. I mean, those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pages, uh, you know, whatever they were created for, I thought were still pretty cool to see. Those weren't there the last time I was there. A lot of the a lot of the stuff he pulled off that shelf was all new. I don't know what he must cycle everything through there because uh, uh, I know that he keeps the best stuff close by, and then things he doesn't know about they sit in the bins all around the room. Uh, I know Brian got a twenty five percent discount. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I don't know who the guy was who <laughs> wasn't happy. He replied to the uh, to the you know the last email I sent on Wednesday saying that uh what a waste of time no deals were made something like that and i'm like wow and that was, that was like five minutes after the show was over and i'm like man i i actually i had to say i had to you know i had to contradict his uh his opinion but i thanked him for it but i still had to say i, I think you were wrong um let's see here so uh yeah um I'm, i have gotten a few things and i and uh, in the mail and i did actually uh Corey's in the chat 
And I did open uh, the package that I got from uh, Corey because I, I knew there was glass in it. And I, you know, and I didn't hear any glass rattling or anything like that, but it, I was paranoid nonetheless. So I felt like, um, uh, uh, let's see that, you know, that the, 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 the I, I just didn't want to make, I want to make sure they were okay. But, uh, well, Black Piper, you know, I don't know. What, what are you, you going to do, man? If you it, like any collector, if he likes that one more, he's going to want more for it. So uh, if he has a uh, pop mine on his site for 250 bucks, if he has, a, if he has the one in hand that he wants a thousand for, what are you going to do, man? But, um, uh, Corey, yes, shipped straight from the maker. That was the other thing, too. They came right from the distillery. <laughs> So, uh, so I decided I had to open it because the funny thing was the box was gigantic, Corey. I don't know if you, I, you know, you, your wife probably brings those home just by the bottle. But uh, when they ship them, this, the box was uh, literally like two foot by, you know, like 14 and uh, by another, I don't even know how deep it was. It was probably another, at least, you know, it was longer, it was longer than a foot. It was huge. It made you think there was a case of, uh, of alcohol in there, but there wasn't, there were just two bottles and I have not opened them. I'm not going to open them tonight because I, I would never drink on the show. Uh, you know, but I will uh, just try to, uh, uh, no, I don't think anybody thought you were being anything there. Uh, black Viper adorn at all. But, uh, yeah, so I've got, uh, what was this one? This was a, uh, <laughs> maker's mark, uh, from 2024, uh, 110 proof. It says the wood finishing series. So that's going to be interesting. Bob, I'm sorry. I know that uh, you haven't had a drink in 30 years. I'm just uh, bourbon is uh, one of my one of the few things that I do drink uh, in moderation. And then uh, uh, he asked me which which version of Maker's Mark that I want. And I told him I told Corey to pick the one that he likes the best because at the end of the day, I'm not a connoisseur. Um, but uh, yeah, lacquer liqueur uh, distillery edition. That was the first one. So then this one was uh, it was funny. This is number 46, but it actually says right on it. Bill's recipe. So, uh, yeah, it was basically meant for me. So French oat, Kentucky straight bur bourbon whiskey barrel finished with uh, 10 virgin French oak staves. So uh, there you have it. I'll be giving this a try this weekend. But I, I didn't want to crack into them. They look too great like that, right? So uh, thank you, Corey. And thank you uh, for your wife for working at Maker's Mark. Maybe we should talk to Maker's Mark about being a sponsor at OX in 2025, we might uh, we might have a uh, yeah. That's funny. I just saw Mar Marvel one number one fan was saying the same thing. Casper had so many great bottles at the penthouse party, right? Well, you never know. So uh, that's the thought. Uh, let's see here. So what are the other two things? Okay, I, I did. Well, no, I'll go ahead and I'll open up the air first. I got a package. Uh, I'm doing a show with Dave Seeley um, the week after next. So uh, he sent me some art. And I don't know what's it. So we're going to get a chance to take a look at it first here. And it's always crazy, I, you know, because, you know, we've we're got to be fair. This is a rather thin envelope. And then on the inside, it's like the, you know, the art is like right there. There's another piece of cardboard in there. But it, it's, it made it without, there's no fragile note on the packaging or anything. Uh, but, but hey, it, it made it intact without a ding or a dent so let's see here uh it's a local man page now i haven't read local man but um i've heard it was really good I'm sorry to say that tony fleeks would probably be mad at me for saying that uh but yeah local man gold so that's an interior page let's see here so this will be this will be the saturday after next because this saturday obviously i've got brian hitch on at 2 p.m and then i have Jiggy, or or maybe I'll start calling him Ziggy, at 9 p.m. with his team on uh, Saturday evening. Now, this one, I'm not, let's see, it just says, well, it doesn't say anything. Else. Oh, wait, west, what? West of Sundown? I'm not sure what that is. It says number 10 variant. Oh, some crazy looking uh, creature with a, and there's some lady with a gun. I'm not familiar with it, but I will familiarize myself with it before I show it the other uh in a in a week and a half then i don't know if this is a pinup no note on the back i guess i'll find out there's some haunches there for you i, I i'm not gonna do that i'm sorry uh there you go i don't i don't know what it's from there's no notation on it at all except it's signed sealy 20 
two on it. And then we have another uh, another pinup, I guess. Maybe maybe these are all pinups. Yeah, because there's no note on the back of there either. Uh, there you go. I think they'd say, did somebody say ooh la la? Uh, nope, nobody said ooh la la yet. Uh, shake them. What is <laughs> bring the G? <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Jiggy. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, again, this must be a uh, a pinup of some sort. I mean, again, there's no notations on it. This is a, it's very curious. But you know what? It's funny. I mean, literally, Bob Layton, or I'm sorry, Tom Layton was just talking about bagels. Now, this looks like someone who might work at Dyson Comics. I mean, look at this. She is, she's got a bagel, a knife, and she's wearing a uh, you know an apron, and I don't think she's wearing much else. So uh, yeah, all right. Ask for bagels, receive bagels. Uh, geez, these are getting a little more raunchy as we go through. Is there a, there's nothing written on this one either. But if you're into classic American horror and strip tees, this is a, this is an interesting, very interesting piece by Dave. You know, look at that. You got Jason in there, Chucky's in there. Um, man, a little nightmare on Elm Street too. Look at this, crazy. I, yeah, I, and I know Marcus wants me to wiggle it, but I'm I'm not. Uh, all right, so what we got here? Now this one, oh, this is a local man piece. It's uh, and it looks like it's a splash page to a local man. It's a seventeen and one, so I don't know if it's uh, is, you know, is there seventeen issues to local man? I didn't think it went that high, but uh, at any rate, there's uh, there's an interior. Then um, this is a I don't know. Again, it looks like a pinup, but it's something someone else penciled and Mr. Seely inked. So there's that. Ziggy Moondust and the comic artist from Mars. <laughs> We're going to have fun with uh, Jiggy on Saturday night, aren't we? All right. I have no idea what this is, but the title, um, does it have me intrigued? I don't know. It's called Money Shot Comes Again. <laughs> and it's spelled C-O-M-E-S, okay? It's for the, getting that straight. This is number three, and I believe it's a cover. With the, blah, 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 or, and it says with a nod to Mobius on it, so... Uh, so there you have that. I bet that isn't what you were thinking, but, uh, there it is. Then, um, again, this, you know, this, this kind of looks like it was probably a cover, but there's no notation on it. I mean, I, I think I'm, oh, wait, here we go. Something called Hex Wars. Hex Wars number six cover. Yeah, not familiar with it, but again, I will, uh, I will do some research. Then, uh, this is rather curious. Um, something, okay, another West of Sundown. This is West of Sundown number seven. It's a uh, woman in a tub, and I, and I think that's a peeping Tom right there. Then, wow, I don't, well, <laughs> I might save this one for the show. Uh, I think I need to, because like, I probably need like a little black strip on this one. Yeah, I think I need a little black strip on that one. I'll wait for that one. Uh, let's see. I'm going to guess this is a, uh, I don't know, it's like a commission style, style piece. Um, coming down there, uh, if this was your Christmas, I'm sorry. Um, this was not the Christmas that we had here in Florida. But, uh, you know, if it was yours and, you know, it might be a bit of a, bit of, of a frightening event there. But at any rate, there you have that. Now, I, I think I have to hide. I can't show this one either. It's got to be heading on it, though. I mean, it, it, it's almost like it would be fun to show, but I can't. But I'll show the top of it. It's like a cheerleader, and she's holding on to a couple of uh, severed heads, but she is not wearing anything. And I mean, she's not wearing anything. And she is, you know, uh, she is doing a, uh, a cheer at the moment so uh yeah we'll we'll save that for the show when i i'll let emma handle the black lines uh let's see here uh don't know what this is uh back like the other ones it does not wait no it does it says h uh hs well four sorry don't know what it is but it's a painted piece then um well, this is something he managed, right? What do we got here? Uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation prequel number one cover. 
So there you have it. That's nice. And then we got, oh, and then the uh, prelim to it too, blue line. And then I guess a little Valiant action in here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Is this actually published? Is there a note on it? It doesn't look like it. But, uh, but uh, yep, it looks like he's, uh, he's losing his intestines in this one to a certain degree. You have that right there. So there you have it. That's uh, that's the artwork I have for Mr. Seeley, and I'm looking forward. I've never, I've actually never talked to him, so I'm looking forward to getting to meet him and chatting with him about his career and selling some artwork. I have a feeling. I did have Larry Wells on before, Marcus. Thank you for reminding me. It is after ten. Uh, I don't know. That was a crazy cheer artwork. I'm not going to show that one yet. Um, Let's see. Yeah, she wanted to keep her cheerleading outfit clean. So, uh, I, you know, I follow Facebook a little bit. I know I, I go on there once or twice a day, usually to reference something, uh, you know, from somebody. But the other day, I was I was actually using the Facebook app, and I came across a marketplace item from Randy Martin. If you're friends with Randy, you probably saw him too. He was he's selling. You know, well, I think like a month ago, we talked about breaking into a storage locker. That he and emptying it of stuff, and he had all kinds of stuff, right? Yes, save the cheerleader, save the world. All right, I'm going to work that into that uh, piece when I when I show it. Um, but anyways, back to Randy. So he was, uh, I I guess he's probably had a lot of stuff in storage somewhere around in Atlanta, and he decided he was going to break into that storage locker and he emptied it out, and he was going to start selling stuff from it. Well, in this last week, he was maybe even like maybe probably like ten days ago. I think he posted. Se several sets of statues, you know, the old Bowen statues and stuff that uh, he wanted to get rid of. And so, you know, I mean, I, I've always wanted, I, you know, I have, I have not, I have zero of those kind of statues. I've always seen them and thought they were nice. And they're actually really affordable. So if you're friends with Randy yet and you haven't noticed his marketplace uh, uh, posts, I mean, he's got like a couple of Wolverine um, bust statues, $35. I mean, uh, you know, I could have went through and spent a thousand dollars easy because there was just so much nice stuff. But so I went through and I didn't buy a Cyclops. I didn't buy a Thor, um, but I did end up picking up and I, and I opened these already. And I thanks goodness I did because there's, there's uh, peanuts all over the place here because it, he packed it with a lot of peanuts. At any rate, so I did pick up the Sentinel. See, got to get that. I was happy with that one. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to take it out of the box, but you know, kind of cool. It'll be on the, on the, 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 you know, the back wall. And then this one's still taped up. So I'll open it up. Cause it actually, I, I was hoping it would be the actual box that came in, but probably not. Um, I spent a little, this was a little bit more money than the, the other ones, but not, not a lot, but when I saw it, I had to have it. Uh, and every time he's, he's still putting them in there, he's even reducing the prices on some of them. And it's almost making me want to go back and buy more. But I'm going to I'm gonna restrain myself and not buy any more of these. Right. So uh, this was a, um, oh, they're actually in bed. So it didn't have the original box. That's okay. I don't, I've never been a, uh, a collector of um, stuff and then leaving them in the uh, original boxes. I don't throw them out. Uh, all right, I'll take them out of the bag so it'll make it easier to see these. But this is a, a pair of bookends. <laughs> I mean, it's just so, it's quite fitting, of course. And uh, let's see here. I'll hold it like this. Right there. Look at that. The, the Hulk and the thing. How fitting is that, right? I mean, to have those, I'll put them on the back shelf. They'll be holding up some books. It'll be good. But uh, after all the time doing the dueling dealers, I just thought this was uh, these were funny, right? They're funny. So, yes, uh, I am the box hater. So it is it is true. Threw every one of them out. But, uh, but yeah, but even these, I mean, I forget what. Uh, so I think for the two of them, I got, I might have spent like $200, something like that. I can't remember. But he had plenty of statues uh, that were like 35 bucks, under 50 bucks. And I'm sure they retailed for that same amount when he bought them 15 years ago or more. So... Uh, Chris Snork says he has these. Of course you had to have them, Chris. He had a, he had the, the thing with the cigar, um, and it was only like $35. So if you don't have that one, I know where you can get it. Um, Chris can have the Hulk. 
Anyway, so uh, so thank you to Corey and uh, thank you to uh, to Randy for selling me those, and then uh, thanks Dave Seeley for sharing all those pieces with me. Now, I'm gonna have to figure out uh, what the, what they're from and how to price them because there wasn't a cover letter in there either. But um, but yeah, so so this weekend, like I mentioned, I do have Brian Hitch on. I haven't picked all the all the pieces yet that we're going to offer for sale, but I figure I could show you, you know the the pieces that we are going to offer if you're interested i'm sure you are so i can do that i don't have any of the pieces from ziggy's show yet um, but i think he's teased a few of them here or there uh on social media they're going to be uh um you know it's all 80s themed cartoon stuff so it's going to be fun what you know we're going to have uh, a lot of laughs on saturday night so i hope everybody uh is you know is well rested and ready to spend some time with uh, Jiggy, myself, and the next comic art crew. So let me, uh, let me open up this thing here. And then, yeah, let me, sorry, I, I didn't have this thing prepped for you. But all right, here we go. Got that, got that. And now I can present it the screen. So, like I say, I'm not done uh, going through stuff. I did end up getting um, a few more things uh, from uh, from Brian's past. So another another couple boxes of his art uh, that, you know, I'm helping him post to his calf. I'm going to, you know, we're going to do these live streams. We're going to, you know, just slowly meter the stuff out. But uh, this was a piece he actually gave to me back at, at Megacon. It's, uh, what is this from? This is um, Star Wars Revelations number one. So uh, we'll have that one available. Uh, this is a uh, Moon Knight 8 cover. So kind of, I think this was 2021, somewhere around in there. So you get Moon Knight fighting Deadpool. Uh, this is a Venom cover. You get Kang slicing uh, a Venom in half. I, uh, I have not read Venom, but, um, you know, getting one sliced in half is, is always fun. Then uh, an X-Factor 118 page. So I think that's, that's from the 90s, right? Everybody's... In many of your your sweet spots, I think, right? Well, okay, I didn't that didn't come out right. Anyway, uh, after that one, a uh, Colossus page, and uh, that's that's kind of fun. Again, I think that's ninety seven, maybe maybe ninety eight, um, maybe even a little earlier. And a lot of these are the newer stuff. Of course, is uh, Brian pencils and inks, and then like uh, this piece, and I think the last one was with uh, Paul Neary inks. So uh, this Colossus page, there's a Wildcats page. This is like from 99 too. Um, so uh, I, there, was, uh, there was a couple of uh, Wildcats pages in uh, the bunch I got. So this is Neary Inks on that. Uh, this is an X-Patrol piece. This was, a, this was actually an amalgam comic, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I just, I'm almost positive. I haven't, I haven't researched it yet, but I'm pretty sure uh, it was one of those, uh, you know, the DC Marvel amalgam. Uh, creations. Hopefully, maybe Derek or uh, Brian can confirm for me since they know more about uh, comics history than 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 me. And and Marcus has confirmed that he uh, loves the sweet spot. It is the thing, but it's the amalgam thing, actually, Alberto. Um, oh, look! It's uh, you know Tina said it's Rom's birthday today, and he said I want pizza and the watch jiggy. Uh, or is that Saturday when it's when it's uh, Rom's birthday? Uh, okay, X Force and Doom Patrol is X Patrol. Thank you, Derek and Chris, for uh, you know confirming for me that it definitely was an amalgam. I have a few other pages from that, but uh, yeah, Saturday's his birthday, everybody. So, so when we see uh, see Rom in the chat on Saturday, whether it's in the morning at bright, well, he's if, if it's his birthday, we he should only I don't know, he's got to pick one only one show to go to. So, I'm assuming it's going to be uh, Jiggy's show. But uh, we'll all say happy birthday to him when we see him. Uh, all right, X Patrol. Then I have this uh, the Shing uh, Thing Shing Thing She Hulk page. Hitch Neary. This was late '90s, I think. Uh, you, look at it. The Thing is wearing a shirt that says "Wide Load." Uh, quite interesting. And uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, this is um, I, I'm like you know it says Avengers Ultron War. But when I tried looking that up, there isn't a book called Avengers Ultron War. So I got to figure out exactly what story this is from. But you get Wolverine, you got 
Captain Marvel, you got Thor, you got Iron Man. Uh, I see Moon Knight in there. It looks like the Beast. Um, uh, yeah, that, so a good looking page. And um, what else we got? Then uh, some DC for those of you DC fans out there. There's a JLA 52 page. Uh, what we got? Uh, I can see Wonder Woman's behind in that top panel, and um, I think there's Flash and uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, oh, look down there. He, there's I think that's Batman. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, JLA 52, Hitch and Neary. Then uh, this is a little bit more current, uh, Batman, uh, Batman's Grave, issue two, when he uh, puts this guy to sleep, clearly, with that last punch. And what else is there? Oh, uh, I think this was a Action Comics cover, I think 13 or 14. can't recall exactly. But uh, I got that, so that's a little bit newer. And uh, get the pencil piece with it too. Then Ghost Rider fans, I think this is a Ghost Rider uh, cover, Ghost Rider 8, I think it's from my notes. Um, I don't know what Miracle Man is doing on the cover with him, but I think there was some weird, didn't Marvel do some kind of PR thing at one point when uh, uh, they had Miracle Man on some covers? At any rate, and this is oversized too, it's like, I'd say about at least a third of these pieces are, um, oh, they're not like, they're probably like 14 by 19. I mean, they're an odd, some of these are odd sizes, but this, this is a big one. Um, there was a Colossus page. Now. Yes. Oh, Jason's uh, Jason's missed out on some stuff. Sorry. Sorry, Jason. Um, then this is a Brave and the Bold cover. This is um, issue one, but it's one of the variants. It's like cover D or C or something like that. Um, then this is uh, a JLA Heaven's Ladder interior, and I know this one was oversized too. I don't have the size written down on it, but looks like you got most of uh, the Justice League in there Green Lantern, uh, Aquaman's in Aquam, Aquaman's in there, Plastic Man. I mean, come on, what else? Martian Man is in there. Look at all that, and you're surprised that I even know those names too. I bet. But uh, very nice page. Get Superman as well. I don't see Batman in there, though, right? No Batman. Uh, and I think I've got one one more in here that I've because I, I was digging around. Uh, this is uh, from Fantastic Four five sixty, and um, you get uh, look at that. You get Smart Hulk down there in the last panel. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. And then Galactus is uh, he's like he's unconscious at the moment. So in that middle panel. So there you have it. That's what I got so far. I know I'll probably have about four or five more pieces that I'll add to uh, to the set. Um, I think um, I have a, one or two other um, X-Men titles that I could probably add to the set. I know um, I've got an X-Men brood, some, some new, new pieces from issues one and two, uh, and a few other things. Um, yeah. Let's see. Cover your eyes, Bill. There's a skull on that one. I know I saw that, Mr. Red Jack. It was kind of frightening. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm missing. I was not paying attention to the chat at all. But so, so that'll be Saturday at 2 p.m. We'll probably do an hour-long interview with uh, with Brian, and then we will uh, dive into the art sale. So it should be a good time. And then after that, I would imagine that we'll probably do uh, regular. He'll, you know, we'll probably help him do some regular art drops through his calf. Uh, I know he's going to have a booth at uh, Comic Art Live in May, so yeah, lots of lots of stuff. How many pieces? I think twenty-four, Marcus. Um, oh, that's right. Bob wants to do a Space Ghost cover for Nick. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was right. Uh, let's see here. Why don't we talk about the schedule next? And uh, I, I've added a few things in here. I still have a few to add, but uh, this is fairly comprehensive at the moment you know like i say you got brian on saturday we got next comic art with ziggy at 9 p.m on saturday josh middleton next tuesday tim seeley next saturday uh andrew g along with dinesh and satari uh, andrew's never been on the show before so uh, i'll probably be doing a little bit of a interviewing with him uh, we've got an amateur match on April 3rd between Tatiana and Matt Tatulio. I'll have collector Jared Simmons on t on Tuesday the 9th. And Sarah Jane Blum. It's either Blum or Bloom, right? But we'll find out. I'll We'll get the pronunciation when I get the interviewer. Um, she's from Heritage. 
I uh, used to be with Grapefruit Moon Gallery. That that was actually a physical gallery in L.A. They, I, I found out about them through the eBay uh, store many years ago. But uh, I'm looking forward to talking with her. She's gonna. We'll do an interview. It'll be half interview and half uh, preview for an illustration signature style auction that's happening. I think end or ending later in April. Then I've got Mike Oming and uh, Taki will be back on the 20th of April. Um, on the 22nd of April, that's a Monday, I'm going to have Mark Hay along with, I think, three or four of his artists. And uh, a gentleman, uh, Tony Akins, many, many people probably know, he's a comic book artist, and Mark Repson. Uh, he's got, uh, he's, 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 uh, he's, he's taking care of his mom, and uh, his, he's not been able to work that often. And, so, and some of the, his friends, art, you know, other artists within Splash Page, wanted to help uh, Tony raise a little money. So they were, so we're going to do an art sale where everything is going to be going to Tony. And I can't tell you what, uh, you know, which artists are going to be a part of that just yet. I should have an announcement for that maybe in a, in a week or two, but you know, I think we'll be doing some live sketching and uh, um, just offering up some pieces there and, and with all, with all the funds going to, uh, to Tony. So that'll be fun. Uh, then as you can see, we, I've got that amateur dueling dealer match uh, towards the end of the month on the 24th of April between Mr. Lovitz and Mr. Nick Barucci. That's going to be a good time. I, you know, the two of them together, they are, uh, they are a lot of fun. So if you, uh, if you've gotten to see them hang out, uh, they are great friends and I'm looking forward to having them on camera with me for that evening. It's going to be a good time. Then uh, what do we got? We got the big ninth, Comic Art Live Virtual Con will be the weekend of May 11th and 12th, and uh, that should be fun. And we got we are making some upgrades. I mentioned that already. The, you know, the big thing we're working on right now is integrating the Comic Art Live Virtual Con mail into CAF mail, such that uh, going forward you'll be able to manage your Comic Art Live booth mail, your sent items, everything from within uh, the CAF mail system. Booth owners will still be able to access strictly the the mail that came through comic art live from within their booth but uh it's been something we we've kind of held off from doing because it is a little bit of work but uh we're, we're it's it's worth tackling now um given the direction and the changes that we we have planned for this show and the 10th show next november so uh, what was that? Alberta was saying, Lovitz and Barucci are always buying art from each other. Their ATD is probably going to be stuff they sold to each other. I don't know, Alberto. That's that is possible. Uh, definitely possible. Um, <laughs> how many big Lee, John Romita Jr. press pieces? Uh, uh, any, you know, Tom Rainey? Will there be anything like that? I don't know. Um, I, I'm sure we will have uh, it'll a good time will be had by all. Nick should just put Spencer. <laughs> Jason, that's not fair. Um, and then I do have a few other um, sales shows that are coming up. I have, uh, I can't mention the names that I don't have inked down yet, but Jamal Eigel, uh, who I've, uh, I've actually spoken with a few times in the past, uh, I'll be doing a interview and sales show with him in June, June 1st. Uh, no Garney cap, <laughs> says Marcus. But uh, yeah, I've, again, I've known Jamal for a while. I like his art a lot. And uh uh, he's, uh, he, he was open to doing a show. So we'll be doing a show with him to kick off the month of June. So there you have that. I mean, uh, what more can you ask for? Right. Um, gosh, there's a few other things calf related. I wanted to talk about, but I've kind of forgotten about what the heck they were. Um, gosh, what was the thing that Maureen was working on the other day? At any rate, um, yeah, the, I just keep kind of coming back to the app. I wish I could like hold it up and show you, but I'm not because it's, it's going to be a wonderful surprise for everybody. But um, yeah, it's, I, I can't tell you, how, I've never been this excited about something we've been working on uh, as I am in the, uh, you know, in the app and it's, it's cool. And I'm, yeah, I've, I've never used uh, any kind of art related apps that are out there. You know, I don't have Pinterest on it. I did download Instagram, although I, I don't really like Instagram on the, um, you know, as an app on my phone. So when we were looking at usability and thinking about how um, how that app was going to function, I, I actually just went to the Facebook app a lot. I figure, I bet you the majority of you who have 
an app download, download on your phone, you have Facebook. So if we kind of uh, utilize some of the same shortcuts and functionality that's there, it'll just make the make the thing all that more familiar to you. So hopefully that kind of some of that stuff kind of comes across as we pull it all together. But, um, you know, at any rate, I think uh, uh, <laughs> Bill is hiring PewDiePie. <laughs> I am not, Marcus. Uh, yeah, Jeff says you can't save pics on Instagram. Oh, I know. There's lots of things I don't like about Instagram. It's just the, the app is just weird, but I don't even like the site. I mean, I, I utilize it now just because we have been using it a bit more for social media and everything. But uh, I don't like Instagram. Can't put links in anything. I mean, it's just goofy. Uh, I saw Sadar was going to be a beta tester. I think Mar Marcus said that earlier. Was Sadar hired to be the cat? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, Sadar was hired to be our uh, chief, um, you know, hole puncher and uh and flaws or things that need to be improved upon so i don't know if that has a job title or not but uh yeah sadar or Seder or whatever the heck we want to call him uh but um marcus says only michael can afford to bundle nick's art <laughs> he does do uh, he, he, well he bundles a lot of uh, anthony's artwork so we know that uh that he's very accustomed to doing that uh, one of my one of my cats just entered the office so um, so yeah, so I think that's probably, that probably covers most of the stuff that I want to talk about, but we could have a really quick show tonight, but I know we're not, because that just means Chris and I have a lot more time to talk about art security risk assessment says Marcus. All right. I like that. I think that's a, that is a good job title. It, won't, it doesn't pay well, but, uh, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we appreciate the skill set that, uh, that those people bring to, uh, to the table for us. <laughs> All right, Josh. Um, I, I do not get that joke at all. I hate to say it, but um, but I'm yeah, I'm not one of the three people. But I do have to say, Josh, that uh, that that uh, commission you got from Bob Layton was pretty cool, man. Congrats on that. I think that uh, uh, that was awesome. That, that really turned out well. Number one Marvel fan says Instagram's just a pain. Been uh, using yeah, you've been you've been sharing your movie props over there, and that's it. I get it. it it's a it's a pain in the butt. The, the one thing that they do well is they make it really easy for you to double click in the stream and put and put a your like on a on a piece of art. That's that's kind of cool. I would I would give it that. Um, but uh, and maybe we might have uh, taken that functionality to a certain extent in in our app. But I I'm not saying that's true or not yet. Uh, you'll just have to wait till the app is available. Uh, let's see. Alberta says, Bill, I need to answer my email before Saturday so I know. Uh, oh, I, I, I know. Yes, Alberto. Uh, I will definitely get back to you before Saturday. Um, and, but Chris says that, you know, the thing that Instagram is good for, and I know that Chris uses Instagram a lot is to follow artists, right? It's an easy platform for artists to share their stuff. And there are a lot of, uh, uh of artists that use it. So I will, uh, I will agree with you there. That's the one thing out of all the people that I follow on Instagram, it is, primarily artists. So when I, it is kind of cool when I load up the feed and, uh, you know, all I'm looking at is comic art. I love it. You know, you go to Facebook and it's never like that. I, you know, I, I fall as far as the groups and things I'm in, I'm in more art related groups than anything, but, uh, you know, you, you don't get to see those posts too often unless you go over to the groups. Facebook is just a confounding mess at, in, in that regard. Um, so I, I will give, uh, Instagram props for that. I can't say that CAF will be quite like that, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, the, when you're logged in and you're hitting your dashboard, I think you'll, you'll be really happy. I think there's going to be ways that uh, you're going to see so much more artwork than you've ever seen before with the app. Security alerts. To <laughs> NSN. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, Alberto. I don't, Alberto only you, I'm sure you only use Instagram for following cat. Cap uh, related posts. I'm gonna have to text my kids to get this cat out of here because he's he's just gonna bug me. I don't have any food for you. Hit the road. No, nope, it's not working. So uh, anyway, so I do have a uh, a page I love segment tonight. Um, you know the uh, uh, Mr. Kevin Sharp. He's always 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 uh, you know putting some time in. I know he's. He, I think he. I still think we have probably like three or four shows in the can that uh, we have. And I was going to skip a week, but I knew I had a light night tonight as far as uh, video segments and news segments to go through. And uh, I didn't have a, an, an extra guest other than, uh, than Bob today. And 
Uh, so we've got a page I love with Steve Engelhardt. And oddly enough, uh, the PC picked was uh, something by Jack Kirby. So, uh, I, you know, apropos, we just had Tom earlier talking about not only bagels, but Jack Kirby. So uh, Engelhardt ha has uh, his, his favorite piece of art is uh, one that was done by Jack as well. Yeah, the cat wants to play with all the packing peanuts. Yeah, I hope not. Um, so uh, yeah, we want the cat. Everybody. Everybody wants to see it just for a second. Look at that. This guy's name is Ace, right? Look, Ace, right over here. Look at no, he's cats are dumb like that. At any rate, I'll uh, I'll get him in the house after I start playing this video. So, uh, all right, what do we got here? Again, this is uh, Mr. Engelhart talking about his favorite Jack Kirby art, and uh, and it's a fantastic four cover. Hi everyone, it's Kevin Sharp with another edition of A Page I Love. Today's guest, if you are a reader of a certain generation, needs no introduction. If you're a reader of a younger generation, let me throw out a few titles you may have heard of. Avengers, Justice League of America, Detective Comics, Captain America, Green Lantern, Doctor Strange. I could keep going, but I don't want to use up all of our time. Listing the man's credits, Steve Englehart, welcome to Comic Art Live. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thanks, it's nice to be here. So you, as a writer in the course of your career, have worked with a real murderer's row of talent. And I was very curious where your taste would go when we're talking about fan, art fan, Steve Englehart. So tell us what you chose to talk about today. I chose the cover for Fantastic Four number 27. And the reason is real simple. It always struck me as kind of the quintessential what Marvel was about in those in that era right this is like mid 60s for this it looks to me it has always looked to me like they said jack we need a cover and he sat down and in five minutes he banged this thing out i mean it's just sort of like pure kirby at the you know when he was really happy <laughs> <laughs> at marvel uh you know loving the whole concept of the universe they were creating together and so on and so forth and so this cover is just like Pure 60s Marvel. When would this have first uh, come to your attention? Were you an FF reader at this time? No. I started reading the FF, amazingly enough, right in the, with well, FF 49, which was right in the middle of the Galactus Silver Surfer era, which is probably why <laughs> I'm here today. You know, I was at the end of my freshman year in college, and a guy in the dorm for whatever reason, because I didn't wasn't into comics at that point, but he shoved a Ditko Spider-Man in my hand and said, you've got to read this. So I did, and I really liked it, and, and went down to the local newsstand and so entered the Marvel Universe at the end of, uh, 19, well, the middle of 1966 with the FF. First thing I read was the FF with Galactus and Silver Surfer. But fortunately, the the newsstand in the little college town that I was in never really cleared off their racks. And so I was able to get like m multiple months of the various Marvel things, which then introduced me to the whole soap opera ongoing continuity aspect of everything. So that summer, I went back home to Indianapolis, which is where I am from, and spent the summer sort of going around to, you know, antique stores, used thing stores and they all had a box of used comics for a nickel and so i'm happy to say i was able to get spider-man number one for a nickel i was able to get you know all these various things and it was that summer that i sort of filled in the the marvel universe going backwards from 1966 and so that's when i would have seen this cover for the first time you know that was like the first summer of marvel love it was summer <laughs> you know all that stuff and so this thing just really jumped out at me as kind of like the quintessential this is what marvel is right it's fun very interestingly drawn it's so simple in a way i mean it's so archetypal although sue's head's a little small i think but this to me is is 60s marvel when you look at this cover now as as a seasoned professional, at removing yourself from the young man who found it in that summer, 
What are the elements of this cover that jump out to you today? When I went to work at Marvel, Marie Severin was was the color coordinator there. And it was a bullpen. And so everybody hung out with everybody. I mean, there was no cast distinction between the, the young guy who just got there and everybody who'd already been there. Marie said to me once, the secret of Marvel covers is that you can tell what they're doing from across the room. She was pointing out the DC covers in those years. They like to use a lot of color shading and darkness. And, you know, it it might have been a more artistic piece of work at the end of the day. But with a Marvel cover, you could be across the room and you could see it, which she thought, and I agreed, was like a genius way to sell things, right? And so that's what, you know, this cover, you could step far away from your computer, kids, and you can still tell what's going on on this cover. It's got Reed looking heroic. It's got the torch going into action. It's got the Submariner looking anti-heroic. It's got a green guy in the background <laughs> doing stuff. The combination of elements, I mean, there's there's six people on that cover, and yet it's completely legible from across the room it's it is a poster you know marble covers were posters it's got everything it needs to have and it's interesting looking and i'm i'm sure it took kirby five minutes to draw that did you ever meet kirby during your time at marvel yes and and afterwards as well i'm you know i'm not uh mark evanier i didn't hang out with him but um i was actually over at dc one day when he was um, had just come over there, just you know, gone over to do the Fourth World, and he took a bunch of us to to dinner just because we were just standing around. And he, you know, and I was, I mean, I was nobody, but I mean, he just sort of, you guys, you guys want to go to dinner? Let's go to dinner. And then, you know, at various conventions, San Diego, so on and so forth. Well, because we're on the Comic Art Live channel, I have to hit you with this question. Do you own or have you ever owned any Kirby original art? Uh, no, I don't think so. And I would probably know. But I, I have an art collection. It's all stuff that was given to me over the years. I never bought anything, you know, so I never worked. Kirby never gave me anything, so I don't have anything from him, no. Well, Steve, thank you again for your time and for giving us an excuse to look at a dynamic Kirby cover from, you know, as you said, prime Marvel era. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Mr. Engelhart, for doing that. And Kevin Sharp for, again, giving us another one of these uh, pages I love. I don't know how many he's done so far that we've been able to post. It's got to be at least 30, right? I'm going to have to go back and look. I, just, I have not... Uh, I haven't organized them very well up on the YouTube channel. I've uploaded them all, but I uh, never numbered them. So I'm going to have to go back and take a look at that. But uh, Kevin, thank you as always. I sincerely appreciate it. Um, maybe the next time we do one of these, because you haven't been on the channel in a while, we should have you introduce the next one. How's that? I think that would be good. Those of you who've never met Kevin, if you were at OAX, you would have been able to meet Kevin. But uh, uh, it would be it would be fun to get him on the, the channel and hang out with us for a little bit. It's been a, been a while. So uh, speaking of hanging out, I've got Mr. Snork in the green room. I should play his introduction, right? I will. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Chris. How are you, man? I'm good. You? I am fantastic. I mean, it looks like you're, whatever's on the table in the back there has changed from the last uh, time. Yeah, I'm, I'm organized to play a game this weekend. So. I'll see. Okay. My, uh, that's my Star Wars table setup. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Not really. It's not, it's not cool at all. But <laughs> it's fun. Yes. Yes. So, so you, you, you probably don't drink bourbon, do you? I drink so much bourbon, Bill. <laughs> so is Maker's Mark good? I've never had Maker's Mark. I so. like Maker's because it's, uh, it's weeded. They don't advertise that it's a weeded bourbon. But okay. uh, that's, yeah, that's what I like. So, uh, yeah, Maker's is good. All right. Well, and I'll, it's easy uh, to get. It's like you know, it's readily available, unlike a lot of nice bourbons. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to sample it, and I'm going to let Corey and his wife know what I think of it after. I'm sure uh, it's after. delicious. I'm sure it is too. You know like what I learned? Just, I learned just today. Like, so, uh, Mountain Dew was hmm. actually originally made to mix with whiskey. That's what it was well, for. I'm, 
Yes. I've never had a Mountain Dew as a, <laughs> as a mixed anything, let alone with whiskey. But, I can't even imagine what that would take. You know, ginger beer, you know, I, I can, you can mix that with a lot of stuff, even bourbon. Well, I love but, Mountain Dew. I'm going to give it a shot. I don't think no I can do it. <laughs> Well, you tell me how it is next week. Try, try to <laughs> I'll, do it. I'll do that, but you won't believe me. <laughs> You'll have to do it yourself too. Uh, yeah. And Corey says, if I like it, he's going to bring more to OAX. Um, okay. I like that idea. We're, we're, we'll have a, we'll, we'll have competing CEO and COO parties at, you know, at the, uh, you know, Ooh. in the penthouses, right? That, that'll be a good time. Both Friday and Saturday night. No, uh, we, we should be like a, a trough you can throw up in between the two <laughs> penthouses. Uh, yeah. Well, let's hope not. Everybody was very. <laughs> uh, that that was the thing when when Kazer was talking about doing the CEO party thing. Uh, I, that was that was my vision. It was like we're gonna have there's, there's gonna be people that are just gonna drink too much and it's just gonna be a mess and what and that's the thing that everybody's gonna remember from OAX. <laughs> <laughs> and. Originally, you know, I didn't see anybody staggering at all, which that was, that was the drunkest I got, but that's not saying much. I, I held myself in check pretty well all weekend. Good. Yes. Well, you know, and I hate to say it, I forgot to give you that beer. And you know why? I realized like two days after I got home, I was like, so oh, I. I never drank that beer. And and you, and the, you want to know what's even worse? Because when I first got to the hotel, the penthouse that was nearest the convention center wasn't available. You know, there's two in each tower. Well, mm -hmm. neither were available there. So they put me in the other tower. And, and then I, I put I put the beers in the fridge there. And then on Friday morning, they moved me to the other tower. Oh, no. And the beer got left there. And I totally forgot about it. And so it was the same thing. It was literally like Tuesday. I'm like, that's alcohol abuse, Bill. Oh, shoot. I left. I left that beer there. Oh, I, I didn't even get to crack one open for myself. Mm -mm. So I know oh, well. I, I was I was very disappointed. I'm, I'm we had a, the can art. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes that's the best part of a beer. <laughs> it's the can. <laughs> it was an IPA. I knew it was going to give me a headache if I drank it, but I was still going to try it. Yeah. Um, Jason says we're all adults, you know, so th that means that he, he can handle his liquor. But Jason, you were the one who said you were going to drink 20 beers at the open bar on Friday night. You had Jason. It was the one who had me worried out of everybody. Jason saying he, he was going to drink 20 beers in three hours. Eh, 20 beers in three hours. is It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. If you're drinking like uh, Coors Light or something, it's not. Yeah. Gonna, you're yeah. not going to be stumbling around. But uh, all you're right. And they're drunk, but. Right. And what was like the best thing they had there it was like yingling or something. Yeah, I, I probably had about 10 yinglings in my in my tenure at the open bar. But well, hey, three, three hours. That's that's not too bad. One every 20 minutes. That's yeah. That's They're free. free. You got to go for it, man. I want to 2814 is saying what we're all thinking. Who can get drunk on beer? Well, if you're going to drink uh, a beer every 20 minutes for three hours, Ron, I when think you drink that... when you drink double digit beers, you can get drunk on beer. <laughs> True. Jason says he was drinking vodka and had his share, but all, but he was very. I didn't even talk to you at the uh, reception, Jason. I, I don't even think I remember seeing you at the reception. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's curious. I'm gonna have to go back and look at the photos just to see if we can find him there. <laughs> uh, where uh, is Jason? Where is Jason? That's that's true. But I yeah. At any rate, enough about yeah. it. We always keep stumbling back into there. Uh, let's see here. Why don't we take a look at my heritage picks, right? We can talk about heritage picks. Um, and, and I'll have to say, when we even get to the, the market report, heritage, heritage had like kind of a, I wouldn't say it was mediocre, but it was just like I, I said, there was like no great pieces. I don't, I think mm -hmm. the price piece was maybe $6,000. So that's kind of low for a weekly auction, at least stuff that we've been seeing for over a year. But, uh, let's see here. And, I, and there wasn't like any like really big home run pieces even uh, even this time around. But at least there was some interesting stuff. There was uh, this, uh, what was it, Defenders 5. So kind of an early Defenders, Sal Buscema page. Uh, you get Valkyrie, Fallen. I don't know. I thought it was a fun page. That's nice. It is, isn't it? I mean, uh, I I, it. it was uh, Frank McLaughlin. Okay. Yeah. And look, it's signed by Steve Engelhart of all people. Oh that, wow! That is I, okay. I don't. I, I do not synchronicity uh, choreograph these shows that well. Uh, but this must have been a Steve Engelhart penned uh, piece. Uh, you know, he, he was a, he was the writer. Okay. That's the time period. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and now you got Sal signing it there. So did Frank sign it anywhere? No. 
All right. So, uh, but oh, I thought that was a cool page. And you kind of get the Hulk in there, even though he's like, yeah, that's him. Yeah, bamping out in a and a some Kirby crackle there. Um, yeah, so that's a good one. Six twenty-five right now. Then there was this Mike Mignola. It said it was a uh, you know it was an illustration, so I'm assuming it's not published, but it was an Abe Sapien piece. So should, mm -hmm. shouldn't go too terrible. It's only five hundred dollars now, but that's probably like a twenty five hundred dollar piece. Given I uh, think it might actually be from a novel. Let's see if it oh, actually Chris sticks. Golden novels maybe. It was it familiar. A, a, anthology. It says uh, odd jobs, honor jobs. So, so okay, yeah. okay. So it was published. Cool. Well, very nice. There, that's uh, we got that one. Oh, it's got the little fish skeleton in the back. I didn't even notice that. Then this is like this is a totally crazy page. This Irv Novik, Frank McLaughlin one. Look at the look at the. It's almost it almost gives makes you a little. Oh, wow. you know, it's like tilt the world. Here, yeah. Go this way. I'm going that way. I, I I got my hands and I'm tipping over here and I'm spinning around, and then I, I mean every angle. It's yeah, look at how many all... times he like dutches the camera. Mm -hmm. It's and almost then... too much, you know. I, but I I had a feature because it's that crazy. I've not seen anything quite like this page before, uh, and it's not that bad. I mean, I, I as a as, you know, I think I think it's a, a decent page. But boy, those angles are all over the place, and, it, and it's not something. I mean, maybe maybe you would do this with uh, like Robin. If Rob, you know, he's an acrobat. If he's going, if he, he was going or through Daredevil. The, or Daredevil, but Batman. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think you need to keep canting the cityscape that many times wow. to to do that. But still, decent page and Makes it uh, fun. Yeah. Uh, then there was this Al Williams Secret Agent Corrigan piece. I, you know, th there was actually a lot of strip art in this uh, this uh, this particular auction for Heritage, and uh, I think there were a couple of Al Williams pieces. I just like this one. I, I don't know why. I, I love that, like the close up and the walking away wherever he's going at this at, with the with the uh the zip a tone on the um the plane there in the second panel i just thought mm -hmm. it, you know it's a well laid out piece because typically you don't see a two panel layout in a in a weekly strip right and, and uh, impeccably inked obviously exactly i mean it's it's stunning got it i mean yeah i didn't i should have zoomed in an even better detail when you go to look at it like that but yeah. uh very very nice uh let's see here so then i I've actually kind of forgotten. Now, uh, I'm sure that uh, Chuck has seen these two. There's two Howard Chaikin illustrations in this week's um, auction. I could, I, I, I just could not show the first one, but I'm showing the second one. Uh, this one, and uh, it's, I, you know, you're a dice. Uh, I remember you're, she was, a you're a you're a dissy. You're a, see, well, uh, so I remember she was some kind of punk rock singer or something in uh, in in the book. But uh, at any rate, nice pinup by her. But the other image is. It's kind of graphic -y. I mean, is I, it Black Kiss or something? No, no. It's it's a it's from uh, American Flag as well. I mean, oh, okay. I mean, I can hover there. There you go. Take a look at that. <laughs> okay, nobody look. <laughs> Don't look at that. You just go over to Heritage and look at it yourself. <laughs> I'm sure, again, I'm sure Chuck, Chuck has looked at it at least once to see if he. Their clicks are through the roof right now. <laughs> exactly. But I saw it and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I'm like. I can't show that piece. And so I was happy when I saw this one. I'm like, I, that's a good one. Uh, then, you know, this, I just thought that as, as far as an illustration goes, this is from a Sherlock Holmes book, Renegade Press, 1986. I have no idea what that would have been from, but uh, Dan Day. I just thought, you know, just. Oh, that just, is cool. Isn't the, I, I like this page. You know, I know it's a gun. I mean, you know, it's just violence and stuff, but it's a, it's really well done. I mean, this is an old pistol. I mean, it's. Very cool. It's, yeah, I mean, how often are you going to have a have a gun like you know, in as a framing uh, device? Framing device through you yeah. know for the whole thing. Thank you. And Dan Day, I mean, you know, no slouch. Nope, nope, <laughs> Marcus. Uh, anyway, so that's a good one. Fifty-two bucks on that. I mean, and it probably will go fairly cheaply. Just it's Sherlock Holmes, right? But again, nice, nice, nice piece of art there. Then uh, this is a fun one. Mike Allred. Uh, ecstatics page but uh ant-man all over it and oh uh, awesome isn't this great look at yeah. that i mean just just the first panel alone but then just the inset ones along with it this thing is it's i like this one if uh that's if i didn't cool. already have a few myself I'd, I'd probably be bidding on this one but that's a good one uh and i know ant-man is like is one of the characters that mike uh really likes to draw i mean that's probably how yeah. he managed to work him into the stories 
I but, really want one of those Matt Fraction FF pages, but mm -hmm. his uh, Simon says they're only being sold as complete books, and I'm I'm not that guy. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, this will this will make somebody happy. I guarantee uh, that. Then uh, Jason Sean Alexander from uh, this is an empty zone piece again. Kind of like looking at the at the gun. I I like just the whole the way this page is constructed for something. Mm -hmm. You know, the story the storytelling. Uh, it it just works really well with the type reversed and the black boxes, and then it just fits so perfectly with uh, with Jason's you know, art style here. I never read Empty Zone. I, I don't know what it's about, but. Um, but I, I, I like this piece a great deal. And usually his pieces are oversized. I have no idea if this one is, but, um, anyway, I, I like this piece. A great that deal. kind of piece looks great on a wall too. Mm -hmm. Nice black frame around it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, then, oh, I picked this piece cause I've, you know, we're going to have Josh Middleton on. <laughs> There's actually a couple Josh Middleton uh, sketches in there, but Hey, it's Dazzler. So uh, and it says circa 2020s, but I mean, I know Josh hasn't really been in the country in 10 years, so I'm not quite sure how somebody would have gotten a convention sketch style piece from him. But um, there you have it. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dazzler definitely has her fans, too. Definitely. And I, well, I can't remember what the other sketches were, but there was at least one other piece in there by, by Josh. Uh, two more pieces. I had I picked this uh, Butch Geist piece. It's. Made it, it sounded like this thing wasn't published or they couldn't figure out where it was published. But just as, an, again, back to it, this is just a great mm. illustration. It should be the cover of something. I mean, whether it's a novel or a comic, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's yeah. look at this thing. You get the guy peering over the newspaper in the background. I mean, it. I, I like this piece a lot. Great um, composition. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, it's sweet. Uh, Geis, he's just amazing. Absolutely. He's, um, you know, his, his ability to like bring a high level of realism and a high level of stylization is just almost unmatched. Oh, I agree. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, do I, yeah, I have one, I have one guy's piece. It was a gift. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, okay. then this one, this is an 11th pick. I added it because I actually liked when I, when I saw it, it's like five Flash Gordon strips together. And I and looking at it, I like them all together. You know, when yeah. I looked at them separately, it was like, yeah, I don't really like them. But when I saw the piece uh, and I, I had highlighted it, um, I just thought together it was really cool, you know, and it ends with a sniper scope, you know, on there. I mean, so I don't mm -hmm. know what the story's about or anything. But looking at the flow, which is something you wouldn't normally get to see, on a, right. you know, this, this could be a Monday through Friday, right, strip. Mm -hmm. Um but these five pieces together are fantastic. I love the the one in the middle with the sloping hill. I mean, mm -hmm. it just everything about the way this thing flows is just great. I love the you know in the the fourth uh, panel with the with the woman's face always in a shadow. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it, you know. But again, then I zoom in and I'm like, I don't like them as much when I when I look at it like that. But well, boy, what's interesting to me about seeing them like this is that you can really see that like on a in a daily they have to make such different pacing decisions day to day versus how we typically look at like a comic page, right? Like mm -hmm. a comic page is meant to be like a, a series of like moments, whereas a strip, it can be that, but it can also be like there's hours in between or, you know, whatever, and they just have to pace it accordingly. Right. Exactly. Well, then, but yeah, this is cool. And what was the art? Yeah, let me see who this was because I didn't recognize the artist's name. Bruce Jones. I mean, Ralph Reese, most people know, uh, did a lot of inking and uh, some penciling early 70s uh, into the 80s. But uh, Bruce Jones, I'm not familiar with the name. But um, when were these done? Let's see. 1990. So, you know, it's not like these are these are that old. But again, very cool. Yeah. Nice stuff. Dale's got uh, Princess Leia hair. It does. She does. Uh, that is odd, isn't it? I wonder why they decided. To well, do it's not that odd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so there's my there's my picks again. No, no, like major home runs. There's no. I, yeah. I didn't see a piece in there that's going to go for you know eight to ten thousand dollars at all. But I think they had like two hundred and forty uh, comic art pieces in it, so they'll still still do well. Um, 
then uh, okay, we can do the we can do my exp preview, right? Or it's not even my exp, it's Nick's exp preview, and it's a short one too. Oh. I, I saw the time; it's only two minutes. I don't, yeah, it's like what, Nick? We, I can barely I take a leak in that time, Nick. I can't take a bathroom break in the middle of this thing. <laughs> but uh, yes, exactly. Um, for some, I, yeah, either he was in a hurry or somebody was cutting him short. But uh, yes, he's a busy only, man. He, he he is. He's got a lot of things going on over at uh, Dynamite, and I'm sure he's got. A, he's struggling to pick the art for his amateur match later in April. But uh, here we go. We're going to see what the uh, EXP has for us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And uh, Nick, as uh, Nick, I think I should be on your show again sometime soon. We haven't done that in a while. But uh, anyway, let's see what Nick's bringing to the show tomorrow. Everybody, this Friday, March 22nd, 8 p.m. Eastern. Let's say 7 p.m. Eastern. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. The original art experience. We're going to do something different. It's going to be fun. This is most of the art that we're going to have, but we may have a few higher end surprises, but we decided to do a few three P's. I heard that that's a saying and maybe trademark. Maybe I shouldn't say it. Something about basketball. I'm not a sports fan. All right. We're going to have a little bit of Vampirella art. Check out how beautiful that is. People want dynamite art. Here's Paul Davidson, Vampirella. Uh, versus the soup, the dark powers. I gotta get the names right. Then we have three pages of Brett Booth art. A little bit of X Men Legends. Flash forward, that's such a great page. And Flash 46. Then we're gonna have three John Romita Jr. pages. We're gonna have Avengers number seven. Last FF story. Number one, page 11, page 22. These will probably sell as a pair. It's the only two pages I have, so hoping they don't sell. Then we're gonna sell Fernando Passer and JLA 26, pages one, two, and three. This will be one set. Then we're gonna have three individual Jim Starlin pages, Thanos, the Infinity Relativity, number one, page 80, page 82, page six, so these are some of my last Jim Starlin pages as well. Then we're going to have beautiful commission cover art. You've got Magic, you've got Batman, you've got Punisher, you've got the Legion of Superheroes. So this Friday, March 22nd, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I guess I'm thinking like 8 p.m. is the second half. So 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on the original art experience. Hit that thumbs up and share because sharing is caring thank you everybody how do, i don't get it how could you mess that up nick you've only been doing that show for three years now <laughs> seven seven <laughs> seven <laughs> uh yeah those things happen but uh i'm trying to see here okay well let's uh let's get on with the calf update shall we so uh let's see what was the i think it was the 11th through the 17th is our uh, period that we were working with and yes that is correct um, dealers had a pretty decent week, $438,000. And that was compared to the week before, which was pretty awful, $159,000. So a huge upswing there. Anthony led the charge. I'm not quite sure, uh, how I think Anthony's in the chat. He could tell everybody how he did it. I don't think he didn't have an item in the top six, but somehow he has the most sales. Let's see. He had 65 sales, 143,000. So 2000, wow. 2000, a, a sale on average and didn't crack oh, the top six. Uh, then Berkey was next, eight sales, 87,000. Will had uh, three sales, 68. Albert, 33 sales, 50,000. Panel page, five sales, 30,000. Scott Eater, two sales, $25,000. And uh, Felix, 18 sales and over $20,000 as well. So we had a lot of guys doing pretty well this past week. Man, I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> Just selling artwork. <laughs> Just selling artwork. Uh, so let's see here. What do we got for our top six sales from OA dealers last week? We uh, were leading it off with a Todd McFarlane piece. So let's see. This one was sold by Mike. $68,000 was the asking price on this one. It's a Amazing Spider-Man 314 semi-splash. He claims it's the the inspiration for the Spider-Man one cover two years later. Mike is a good salesman. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, it kind of kind of yeah, looked like yeah. it. Uh, the number two piece was sold by Will, $31,000 for this Avengers 285 splash. Uh, John Buscema, Tom Palmer inks on that one. 
then uh what else we got we got uh the sandman number five cover from 1975 jack kirby mike royer inks from sold by will twenty five thousand dollar asking price and what do we i'll see another todd mcfarland piece this time sold by glenn panel page art fifteen thousand dollar asking price this is from amazing spider-man 322 page 16. Then a uh, very interesting one, and of course it would be sold by Scott Eater. Fifteen thousand dollars was the asking price on this one. Art Spiegelman, of course, and this is a Douglas Records jam piece from 1971. That is old. Uh, what do we got next? The last piece, Joe Kubert, All Star Squadron from 1983, issue nine, sold by Will. Asking price twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Look like duo shade board on that one. So, uh, so yeah, solid. I mean. Yeah, dealers had a good week last week. And again, Anthony yeah. was not mentioned in one, any of those. I don't know what the heck he sold last week. Everything was mm. everything was at 2000. Uh, let's see here. So he's making moves. There he is, making sales, making moves. All right. I get it. I get it. You were hustling last week, Anthony. Uh, all right. Let's see. What do we got for auctions? Um, this uh, this past week, of course, they had the Neil Gaiman auction going on at, at Heritage. That one brought in uh, well, the oh, I think the overall auction was just over a million. It wasn't all art, but I think that the uh, let's see, the art totaled eight hundred sixteen thousand dollars. So the total for last week with that auction was uh, one point one million. eBay made up uh, they had one hundred fifty two thousand of sales, and the Heritage Weekly auction had one hundred fifty six with no item going over $6,000. Um, and this first piece I know had a make offer from eBay, but I didn't check to see what it was, but I'll still show it. Let's see here, let me play the play the tape here for the, this uh, top three eBay first. And uh, that one is, uh, you see on screen, it's the Frank Frazetta Johnny Comet Daily. The asking price on it was $9,999. I know that it was one with the best offer, wild guess. I'd say $7,200, but I'll check it afterwards to see if I'm right. That was from 1952. Then there was, uh, this is a, a Magic the Gathering card, and it's an older one. Alan Pollock, uh, he's been infected by art a few times. This one sold for $3,275. And uh, then a John Romita Jr. Uncanny X-Men page from issue 184 went for $3,000. Lovely plush carpet it was photographed on, too. Look at that. <laughs> No stains on that. Uh, then the top three from Heritage. Here we go. The number one, Dick Dillon, Dick Giordano, Justice League of America, 108 splash. Uh, title page went for 5760 bucks. Then uh, we had a Bloom County page. This is from 1983. Went for 5520 Then last but not least, a Frank Springer, Kim DeMolder, uh, Transformers page went for four thousand six hundred and eighty dollars. Wow, that that's a little shocking. I mean, I know we've got Transformers fans out there. I mean, the Professor yeah. Derek is a huge Transformers fan. Uh, I just didn't know that was uh, that was the market. I mean, it was issued. Nor two. did I. Um, or maybe was there a first appearance on that that I, I, I'm not aware of? Maybe they thought it was Daniel Warren Johnson. Ah, yeah, they just read Transformers and said, yeah, issue two, page 17. I'm going that way. Uh, <laughs> Anthony says he had a customer that nearly bought six figures of art at his warehouse. Interesting. Um, anyway, yeah, no, I had no idea. I'm not, that makes me want to go back and look at market data for the Transformers. Marcus, maybe not Marcus seems uh, to think that's spurious information. And he's a Transformers guy. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's true. That is very true. But um Boy, that would be good because I, uh, so when I went through Brian Hitch's stuff, there were actually a couple of Transformers covers in it. I was like, I didn't even know Brian did anything for Transformers. Maybe so. back for uh, Marvel UK. Uh, it may be they were they were kind of interesting. Uh, they they weren't what I expected. And one, well, I don't know. I'll 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 send you pictures if you want. They were they're actually kind of cool. But um, that Transformers book ran forever over there. Then that's I'll bet you that's probably what they were from them. I bet it is. Jason says, is the, is the warehouse empty now, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> Just cakes. <laughs> uh, Brian Bailey says, let's see a Frank Miller Transformer page. Now, that one, well, that would probably do pretty well, right? Um, anyway, all right. So there you go. That was uh, that was our uh, you know, market reports for last week. And we didn't include the, the, the Heritage Neil Gaiman stuff. But the number one selling piece in that 
was a Dave Gibbons Watchmen page from issue mm-hmm. seven. The you know the the famous uh, nuke going off uh, image. You know one of the few times where they broke from the the you know the the the, the six panel grid. You know or the nine panel grid where they actually div- divvied it up even more. And uh, that one went for one hundred and thirty two thousand dollars. Holy mackerel! I mean, yeah. I, I get it. It's it is one of the you know it's it is so iconic. Um, one of a handful for sure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you figure that that's got to be one of. I mean, I have no idea. I have to go back and look at public sales. But typically, the high pieces are always reserved for like a Rorschach page, right? So yeah. no Rorschach on there at all. And uh, yeah, wow. Then there was a Mobius Sandman uh, death pinup that went uh, just under a hundred thousand for ninety six, and then a, a Miracle Man sixteen cover by Tottleben went for ninety six thousand dollars too. Wow! I know. <laughs> I know. Wow. Uh, I know. That, I hope uh, you know that comes. I, the, Neil better be issuing COAs with all of those or something. You know, kind of. Gets, but those are uh, those are very strong prices. But still, I mean, it just goes to show you that good art will all you know will always come in. I mean, because all three of those pieces, you kind of think about, they could be in a gallery. They're that you know they are really yeah. that good and that important to the medium uh, that I think that they're you know. They're, 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 I mean, the Miracle Man cover, you're certainly like, there's a little bit of paying for provenance there too, mm. right? You're able to say like, yeah, this was a Neil Gaiman's collection, you know, blah, 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 for, for sure. I have to think that's a piece of it because man, a Tottleman cover for almost a hundred grand. I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I'm going back to look at it. Yeah. I mean, and I, I mean, you know, which one that is, right? So yeah. I, I'll get out of the show to you, but yeah, you're right. I mean, looking at it, I don't know, but hey, somebody loved it, and no, two people loved it a lot, and that's yeah. that's all that matters, you know. At least but, two, yes. So yeah. Anyway, hey, more power to him. I wish uh, I could get. I, I I I'd love to get any of those pieces, really, Absolutely. especially the, the Watchmen piece. Uh, all right, so now we can move into our picks for the week. And uh, what time is it? We just crossed the uh, two hour mark on the show. We're doing. Oh, we'll good. be done early tonight. Yeah, and it was kind of tough week to, to do picks. I don't it know why. was, man. I don't know what the deal was, but I, well, I think two things. There was so much stuff for sale mm. this week, like the ever you know, red border everywhere I looked. And then the other thing was, I had a couple. I had one piece in my cart, so to speak, and I was like, "Damn it, this is digital!" And it wasn't until I was looking through the description, I was like, "Oh, I love this so much, but I can't pick it." Oh no! Yeah, uh, but you know. I, I actually never looked that closely, so I, what, we're, I'm going to get burned one of these days for not doing that. I, I, so I've already been burned once, and I still feel the sting of it in the comments now and again, so never again. Well, you know, but you share a uh, company with Mikhail because he one of his picks once was yeah. a digital piece, too, so it happens. It definitely yeah. happens, but but it was because, uh, you know, I even went through my, um, where, I, where I look at the most commented, I, you know, that one page that helps me find stuff. Even in there, it was like, you know, there were just wasn't like standout pieces. There were good pieces, lots of comments on. Uh, it just wasn't, um, it wasn't like your normal week for some some uh, yeah. odd reason. So, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and dive into your 10 picks. So let me get the screen where I want it. There we go. Uh, so this was in Mr. Robert Lee's calf gallery, 12-year member of calf. We got a nice Orion. Yeah, this was a this was an easy pick for a couple different reasons. One, I Orion's one of my favorite DC characters. I think he's amazing. Um, but moreover, Carl Kershaw is so criminally underrated as an artist. He's mostly mostly digital. Like the stuff that he does that's published now is mostly digital. So to get a traditional piece from him is a, is a get in my opinion. This is I'm sure it was done at a convention or you know something like that. He does do um, uh, commissions online sometimes that are typically tied out to a Kickstarter reward or something like that for one of his Charles Christopher books. Mm-hmm. But um, I love the tonal stuff on this. I love Orion's uh, expression. Anytime somebody draws him with the Astro Glider, that's just like icing on the cake for me. So this is just kind of a cool image of Orion by an artist that I really happen to respect a lot. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like the ink wash on it. And you you answered Jason's question by calling it an Astro Glider because I didn't know what it was. The, either, but the Astro Glider. 
Yes, but I mean, at least I knew that that's what he, you know, that he flies around on sometimes. But uh, at any rate, no, I, I, I like, I do, I, I appreciate this one a lot. Um, but a very, you know, his style is pretty, pretty nice. And uh, I'm, I can't say that there's got to be a fair amount of his work on on calf, though. Do you think? I think probably a chunk. I mean, um, but again, I, I don't know for how long, but for several years now, he's been all digital. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, I could see how his style could transfer. I mean, if he was, yeah. you know, but still, I mean, these, uh, the Bigby Wolf piece, that's awesome. I mean, he's, wow. Yeah. He did, that. um, he did the flash strip for, um, uh, I'm spacing on the name of Wednesday comics and it was unbelievable. Yeah. He did that for Chuck at, uh, heroes last year. Dang Chuck. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. He's he's just great. His anatomy is amazing. I love his facial expressions. Um, you know, he he doesn't do a ton of tonal stuff, but when he does tonal stuff, it's nice. Wow. Well, that's uh, yeah, I like his stuff a lot. That's uh, fantastic. Um, let me see here. So we have P. Craig Russell, Batman yep. Hot House. Yeah, this was a cool um I can't remember how many issues it is. It might have actually even only been one, but it was a like a prestige format, like square bound book that came out um, when I was working at the comic store. P. Craig Russell on Batman, uh, Poison Ivy is the, the villain. And this thing is, I'm not going to say it's the best thing P. Craig Russell has ever done, but I think as a in his body of work, it's top five. Like he was really firing on all eight cylinders for this entire book. And like, when you look at it at this size, like it's legible at this size, which I think is incredible because like, that means you're just a great like designer of page essentially, mm -hmm. because this reads even at, at this itty bitty little size. But then when you, you know, when you drill into it, you get to see all the, you know, incredible P Craig Russell inking. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's beautiful. And uh, good night, Corey. Thank you for the bourbon. I'll be thinking of you when I drink it. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, there's much else. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yes, yeah, so I think I, I'm, I'm totally with you. I, I like the you know the way he's uh, put no gutter between those panels there at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, you know, he's really isolated that part of the storytelling from that. You know, that uh, just kind of cut scene. You know, going to the cottage there on the bike and everything in silhouette. It's yeah. I mean, he's very masterful in, in his approach to this page, and it's so I, economical, and but it's so intricate at the same time. Yeah, even the even the you know the hand on that, but the arm is kind of coming out. I mean, it's even the yeah. even the word balloon coming off uh, outside of the uh, panel border there is. Uh, it's really I lo I love it. A great pick. I did not see this one. Oh, thanks. Yeah, he's a he's a master. I I really need something from him. I have never owned anything by him myself. Now, uh, Mr. Michael Weigand, who was active uh, in the this, the show last evening, picked up a couple Kelly Jones, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a uh, FF121 Buscema Sinat page. And uh, wow. Air That's Walker. A, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is just peak like Buscema Sinat. Uh, you know, 121 is like two years into the run. They're, they've like absolutely hit their stride. This is, there's so much action on this page there. It's like all really like bombastic. It's like, you know, perfect for the era, the things run in his mouth. So like, there's just a lot of things to love about this one. Oh yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I would love to have a Busama Sinat page from this era of FM. Yeah. yeah. Always. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I've relayed this story a few times, but I remember, I'll say I'll say it was 20 years ago going to Berkey's house and he had like a stack of 20 pages of Busema Sinat from this area of FF, all FF. Mm. Doom was on him. Uh, you mm. name it. I mean, unbelievable stuff. And yeah. you know, it would have been at that point five hundred dollar pages, which would have been a lot for, at sure. you know, even for me. But I remember I asked him, Can I can I, are these for sale? Can I buy one of them? I just wanted one. Yeah. He wouldn't sell them to me. And then mm. like Three years ago, when I was doing one of my early, like, just bin dives, hanging out with him, I came across the same stack of artwork. Still had it. And I am like, and now they're like, you know, they're probably like 
six to eight thousand dollar pages and yeah. i'm like can i can i have one now and he's like they haven't aged enough yet bill put them back what that's what he told me they oh. <laughs> so there's they're probably still there what a heartbreaker i know he freaking kills me man uh, you know it, 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 most dealers would want to turn stuff right like that and here's berkey for like 18 years sitting on a stack of busema Sinat. I mean, he probably doesn't even know that where they are right now. I mean, I could go over there and not see him for another couple of years, but uh, they're there. <laughs> and the Doom That's pages were now. freaking amazing. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so this is a, a great piece. And uh, obviously, uh, Michael has a fantastic calf gallery. Yeah. If you you got to got to check out uh, what he's uh, what he's what he's putting in his calf. Can you can you scroll down? Yeah. Look at uh, look at rung out read. I love it. <laughs> it works. Yeah, he's, whipped. <laughs> he's whipped. That's that's funny. All it took was a was a strong breeze to to you know yeah. he, he could battle Doctor Doom. He could you know take take on uh, you know the negative zone anytime. But a strong gust of wind and a, and a bunch of pedestrians and that's that's yeah. what that's read for you. Lovitz, uh, Lovitz posted a piece last week that I saw when I was combing through, and uh, it's a great image of the thing. And then there's uh, Sue's head and Reed's head and Johnny's head. And his caption said, <laughs> here's the thing with the other three. <laughs> I was like, yes, somebody gets it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, anyway, so yeah, congrats to Michael for this wonderful piece. Uh, next up, we got we have Mannix. Marcus, we we have Mannix. So uh, who's Cat Gallery? Is this Arangas? Of course. It's Arangas, yeah. Yep. Because it's cable. Mm -hmm. So I picked this because I love Aranga. I love cable. I, I'm warming to Manix, clearly. Um, this is just so, I mean, when you see cable with the huge gun, you know, the running, the pouches, like the, all the running jokes, like this is that taken to obviously the nth degree, right? Mm -hmm. And I literally, like, I, I laughed when I saw this. And so I thought the fact that this made me laugh, that's, that's worth picking it alone. Oh, but yeah. then you take into consideration, like, it's got all the, like, awesome Manix elements, right? Really rich colors, like, you know, insane newly little details in places that you wouldn't expect to see them. And, you know, more than anything, this guy is just a great artist. I mean, he's so incredibly, incredibly stylized and has leaned into, like, you know, this is what he does, right? But you can't knock the fact that the guy can just flat out draw. He knows color. He knows shape and design and composition and like all those things that you have to know to be really great at doing this. Yeah. No, with you, you know, my, one of my favorite parts of this is the, uh, is the X, you know, right underneath his chin. They didn't use any black line, you know, to outline it. He's, he's just going yellow yep. and red. red. And that just yep. pops off there. And it does. And it's, and it's funny. It's such a simple little thing, but that, that just, you know, it even makes it more special to me because yeah, I mean, it, it is so over the top with the Acme rockets and everything, yep. but yeah. And what Man, looks like what appears to be like a two slot toaster on the, oh, on his right side there. I didn't even <laughs> see that. But yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. I mean, Maddox needs to get, yeah, he, they need to hire him to do like a graphic novel. Give me a 48 page Mannix anything in the Marvel yeah. universe. And I I think it would be uh, well received and I'm sure it would sell like insanely, insanely. You would have you would have you, you know, those pages would sell out you know within you know within minutes of them being offered yeah. to so yeah, uh get this man a book soon. Mm -hmm. So uh this is uh this is awesome. But Aranga, man, Aranga, Aranga, he he, how does he just keep getting great commission? Does he? What does he got on people that he's able to get such good commissions all the time? You know what I think it is. I've I've thought about this. Believe me, I've thought about this. So in some cases, I believe so they know he's a pro, right? And I think mm -hmm. you bring your A game when you're drawing for another artist, right? But more than anything, I think that the reason he gets such great commissions is because. He knows who to pick for which characters because mm. he's such a student of the medium. That's probably very true. Yeah, you know, you that's so maybe I should ask Aranga when I'm looking for for advice on. Uh, I, you know, I want to get one. I want this character. Who, who would who would you pick if you had if you could you know pick anybody? Yeah, and he might not tell me, but he's going to keep it to himself. No, but, uh, he would. I he's so giving. He is. He definitely is. 
Uh, but this is uh, this is uh, this is a keeper right here. And uh, let's see here, what else we got? This is um, who's, wait a minute, Federico. Yeah, it was Federico's Calf Gallery, 19 year veteran of the site. And uh, I think we wasn't this in an auction. I think I mean I feel like I've seen it before, but I I, I think that's why maybe it was in a maybe or something. But uh, it's crazy dark, you know, image yes. at the end of the day. You know, you get Hansel and Gretel at the in the witch in the in the cookie uh, house and everything. And yeah, well, it's so. I think the thing I like about it the most is that it's it's like so the obviously it's the it's the silhouettes or the shadows of Hansel and Gretel and look at like how pure and fun and like, you know, all that stuff, like the surrounding that horrid witch who's like the dark central image, like as a composition, this is super clever and really well executed. This was Delato, by the way. I, I think yeah. everybody saw that, but uh, yeah, no, I agree. I thought it was pretty cool when I, when I saw it uh, before and I, you know, I love it. It, it, it's so subtle, you know, you're really, you know, the only darks are through the window. Um, yeah. It's a bright sunny day. That's why you have the shadows on the wall. I mean, it's, there's, it, it's just a very well executed piece. It's and very, haunting. Very, it, <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, I, I had Jason's comment about Oranga. He said he just doesn't post the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but congrats to Federico for picking up uh, this this pretty cool piece. Uh, I think I like it's it. tremendous. Also, yeah. it's not painted, which is typically what we see from Delato. So that's kind of cool too. Yep, very true. Pencils, pencils, pencils. Look at that. Uh, let's see. Next up, Stormtrooper Matthew Dunn. Who's Calf Gallery in? David D. I, so I, I pick I pick this deliberately because I want people to like take note of Matthew Dunn. This guy does so much with so little. He conveys so much atmosphere. He's got these heavy atmospheric blacks and these like stark whites. And there is not a lot happening in his images, but the way that he puts the images, to, and I guess what I'm saying is he picks a lot of like static poses and things like that but like with light and shade he makes them interesting and this is a guy that i you mentioned earlier i found on instagram and happened to tyler t happened to be talking to somebody at oax about him and i was like you like matthew dunn and then we started jawing back and forth about how great matthew dunn is and then i find out tyler t owns like half this guy's art <laughs> and he's been buying stuff from him for like quite a while. And I was like, I got a master chief from him. I bought my brother. Uh, he does these little cards around Christmas time of star Wars characters mm -hmm. and uh, you know, sells them on his, on his website. So I bought my brother's like Matthew Dunn card art for, from star Wars for Christmas last year. And he's affordable. I think he's super talented. I think he's um, I don't know. I just think he's great. And I wish more people knew about him. Yeah, no, he, uh, uh, but that's good. It doesn't surprise me that Tyler has, has a bunch of his right. artwork. Tyler seems to find the, the diamonds in the rough out there or before anybody else. I don't know how he does it. What, what his, uh, you know, there's uh there's an extra special level of Instagram that, uh, he's got access to, to see. Yeah. All that we, yeah. Advantage. We plebes don't. Yes, exactly. So, uh, no, that's cool. Very, very nice. Uh, and if you're into, you know, if you're into illustrations that aren't like necessarily quote unquote comic book characters, mm -hmm. like there's one on there of the shining, like, or a couple of the shining, like he did, I think twin peaks at one point. Um, but you see what I mean? Like there's like, it's kind of static, like there's not a lot happening, but it's all like atmospheric. Mm -hmm. I love it. I do. Uh, wow. Huh. And he just, if he hadn't drawn the Master Chief from Halo, I probably never would have noticed him, but there it was. And I was like, I wonder if I could buy that. And I could, and I did. <laughs> oh, man. You are, you're, you're sneaky like that, Chris. I am. I am. Try, try to find things that other people don't know about, except Tyler T. God damn it. Right. <laughs> you're just, you're, we're all just following in Tyler's. Yep. Way. Yep. <laughs> uh J jason d'ambrosio what the heck as thing art <laughs> what 
That's yeah. how you punctuate the sentence. My goodness. How is, how is that even possible? You have Wonder Man, and this is from Thing 5. You got Hillary, Hillary yep. Barta inks on Ron Wilson's pencil. So Jason's got a sweet story about why he bought this in the description, and I won't I won't belabor it. Go look at this and read the description and give it a like. But So for me, in spite of Ron Wilson's volume of work on the character, I'm not a big Ron Wilson fan because I don't really love the way he drew the thing. Full disclosure, that's out of the way. I mm -hmm. do love this page. I love it for Wonder Man, though. <laughs> <laughs> because Safari Jacket Wonder Man is so, I don't know, like it just like it hits me the right way or whatever. But the fact that like he's running around, he's like one of the strongest, most powerful, blah, blah, blah guys in the Marvel universe. And he's got this turtleneck and safari jacket on with his sunglasses that always just, I don't know. I appreciated it for some reason. And like, here he is duking it out with my favorite character, you know, irrespective of Ron Wilson, this is a killer page. Agreed. And, uh, I think I, you know, there's nothing like the, um, Perez Avengers period with, with, uh, with he and uh, Beast running around, cracking yeah. jokes and hanging out. I mean, those were fun times. I mean, you know, yeah. that was a different era of comics, and I, I, uh, I miss, I miss that kind of stuff. We don't, we don't get buddy stories or you know, or those sorts no. of things happening too often. Uh, but yeah, back then that that was great. And yeah, this is a nice page. I, uh, you know, Ron, I'm always kind of wishy washy on Ron Wilson stuff, but I, I think this is a very well designed page and you know it's got j just the right amount of action in there between these two absolutely so, yeah no not bad well congrats jason i i'll have to uh to read his let's see yeah yeah he did write a little bit okay well i'm not gonna read it i'll save it for later um let's see here so mark schultz and this is in paper chaser 1968's calf gallery Wow. What do you even say? That's the uh, unveil. Wow. That's what, yeah. What's the size of this? I wonder if you listed. I no, thought it's massive. It's got to be huge. Yeah, and it's a commission. So Paper Chaser 1968 is is hooked up in the Mark Schultz camp. So respect. I, I like. What do you even say about this? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a it's a masterpiece in like every sense of the word. The 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 poses the anatomy the shading the you know the textures like it's it's all perfect which we you know greedily kind of expect from mark schultz but like mm -hmm. when does he not deliver this so is true. just like this is his this is the bar right the mark schultz mm -hmm. bar and he he never fails to to either meet it or raise it and like this is i don't know man like <laughs> it blew my mind and he has the he has the uh prelims and then like the the tight pencils and then the inks you can see all three because he must have been like sharing it as he went through the commission process oh, oh, okay and there's very little like he clearly conceived of this and then like did a little bit of like well what should i do you know whatever but there's very little wavering between what he set out to do and what he delivered and to see the process and to see like how assured he was of, you know, the image he conceived is, is impressive just unto itself. Mm -hmm. Nope. I love uh, Schultz's stuff. Never owned anything by him, but, uh, but yeah, I've always, always, always loved his stuff. And yeah, this is, it's, it's stunning. Really is nice. What did, what did, what did Marcus say? Uh, he deleted every piece from his gallery. I know he was reposting oh. stuff. I didn't quite, a, cause I thought, because uh, somebody pointed out to me that he'd been on the site for a long time and started posting mm -hmm. just recently, which I thought was odd because I know that I had seen him have art in his gallery at some point in the past. So I, it seemed weird that he was posting. So that would be weird. I want, he must have accidentally, maybe he had like everything in one gallery room and accidentally, and mm -hmm. you know, rather than updating it, like he may just trying to change the description, he hit delete and confirmed the, the deletes and mm -hmm. deleted everything. I had no idea, but that would suck if that was the case. He's a, he's a very nice guy. Um, I actually like, uh, did I buy a piece from him or he bought a piece from me? I can't remember a few years ago and, uh, a lovely, lovely guy. Well, wonderful commission here. That is crazy. Good. 
Uh, let's see. We have just a uh, an illustration, and it's in Mr. Gabe Carino's calf gallery. Tula Latte. I I really love uh, Tula's work. Um, it doesn't really fit into like what I've kind of decided my wheelhouse is collecting wise, but as an appreciator of art, um, you know, she's definitely high on the list. I mean, this is so soft. It's so at the same time, it's so tight. Her likenesses are really, really incredible to the point where even if, you know, this isn't based on someone, like you look at that face and you think, is that like, you know, is that so-and-so? I mean, she really clearly like draws from life, like, you know, metaphorically and literally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think artists who draw from life are, you know, not coincidentally the best figure drawers, uh, you know, the best figure artists. And it shows here. This is the, you know, the, the palettes she picks, like these soft blues mixed with the grays. And it just adds a, you know, a warmth to it, like a, a you know, a, a a realness, like a humanity to the images. I, mm -hmm. I think these are gorgeous. I, I agree. I think it's uh, it's beautiful. And Gabe, Gabe always finds some good stuff out there. And it's mm -hmm. not always like it's not always down the comic art vein, you know. But this is this is great. Um, yeah, I would own it. It is beautiful. Delight loves movies. Said, completely agree. Uh, one more piece here, and I I'd, I'd pick this piece, and then you pick dude. I'm like, all right. One of us had to. I know. It's, it's a Joe Kubert, Raven the Bold, Viking Prince. I mean, this thing just blew me away. Uh, yeah. You know, I saw it. And you know what I also liked about it? I mean, it, as silly as it is, I love the patina on this page. Yeah. I love, I love the fact that it's aged. I mean, it, yeah. it, it looks old. That stamp in the bottom right. I mean, I love the Absolutely. I love the art on it, but I love all those other things about this piece too. Me too. This looks like somebody plucked it out of a museum and and you know posted it to calf, right? Mm -hmm. And the the you know the vintage of the art it certainly like warrants the same comment, right? This is old. Duh. I mean, this is like pre superheroes at at Silver Age DC old. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this was when Brave and the Bold was really like an adventure book. That's how old this is. And, you know, Kubert did this better than anybody, basically. I mean, as far as the page itself is considered, like, you know, the taking the history and, you know, the importance of it away, mm -hmm. that face in the second panel, I mean, my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, Everything. This whole thing is gorgeous, uh, and and the, and the face is what you know hooked me when I first uh, saw the thumbnail. But yeah, even even this you know the third panel here, just you know sh showing these guys stuck in the mud and everything. I mean, it's mm -hmm. God, it's just so damn good. I love, I, and I do. I, I just love this page a great deal. And um, man, oh man, oh man, you know, he did. He had such a way of letting you know how by how a character looked if they were a good guy or a bad guy, if that, what their motivations were, you know what I mean? Like you could see a Kubert character and know if that was the good guy or the bad guy without ever seeing the word balloons. It didn't matter if they were, uh, you know, if it was a Nazi officer, but he didn't have his, his hat on or his helmet on, or his, you couldn't see his jacket or whatever. He still mm -hmm. knew he was the bad guy. He was right. that good at like the characterization. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you. Marcus says Vaughn Hawk fixed that water. The water damage in the bottom, she she probably could. She would she would say that uh, if in because I was talking with her the other day um, and because she really you know there's there's conservationists and there's like you know rest, people who do restoration work. She's more of a uh, you know she's more of a conservator at the end of the day. So, you know she wants to make sure that the piece is going to be around there forever. If somebody came to her and said, "Could you make this white for me?" She would actually tell them she wouldn't do it. Because mm. she she likes the way it looks too. She goes, you know, sure. you, you wouldn't want to ruin ruin that. But you know, like if there making was, it last. But right. But if there were if, if there was uh, mold in the paper because of the whatever the water damage was in the bottom, you know, she would be more than happy to fix that. If there was if there was glue stains on it, she would probably take that out. But uh, uh, you know, because we talked a bit about it, you know, a lot of a lot of the other uh, 
restoration guys, you know, they'll they'll bleach it to make it look new again because a lot of mm -hmm. new buyers want it to look look good. She she would look at this and just say, uh, uh no way, we're not we're gonna leave it as you know as Thank close God. to how it looks today as possible, but, yeah. but fix all the imperfections. So, but yeah, she could flat. I think she could flatten that. Um, yeah, no, that's a good pick. I'm 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 glad you got it, Pete, because I would have I would have been happy to have it too. Um, well, very good. Your, Thank your you. 10 picks were solid as always. So let me go ahead and I had to, I had to reach a little bit, but it was it was worth I it. You told me some that different stuff, some different stuff to discuss. You made me worried when I got your email. It's like, oh, you know, I'd I'd seen a few pieces, I'd seen the, the Qbert, um, yeah. but uh, I hadn't really did it, done my deep dive and I got your email. It's like, oh man, I guess I'm gonna have some my work cut out for me. Sometimes it's a slog. Hmm. Uh let's see, where is oh here we go. Like that. Change the screen. All right. Now we can highlight it. So uh, Kaluta. This was from, mm -hmm. what was it from? Sh the Shadows, 1974. Um, this is in Roger Kay's calf gallery. Um, Roger's, you know, he, this is like Roger's kind of, he loves stuff from the 70s. I mean, he probably, I think he's got stuff from a lot of other eras. But whenever I think about Roger's calf, it's always good stuff from the 70s. And mm -hmm. I, I, I just love the Shadows in this piece. I just think it's. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, 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 they, they're following along with the characterization of uh, the book and and, uh, mm -hmm. and they're just playing it up here. I mean, that bottom panel, uh, you know, you don't need to see the details. You know, the shapes and those shadows that, that are, you know, behind him. And, you know, the, the you know what I mean? I just I, I like I love it for those those same those reasons. I just think it's, yeah. it's fun when you see. Uh, and, yeah, and yeah. storyline wise too, the like the flood lighting from the police mm -hmm. and like that kind of stuff. It just makes it even better. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is a cool page. Very cool. A lot of a lot of fun shapes on there, and like, this is not what I think about when I think about Kaluta. No, right? Like when when you think about Kaluta, you think of like to me anyway. You think like you know wispier lines and you know things like that, and that's here, right? Mm -hmm. But like, there's a lot of like stark graphic stuff happening here, and a lot of you know just black and white. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. So yeah, Roger, congrats. Um, yeah, this is this is a keeper for sure. Uh, what do I go with next? Oh, that's right, Alan Davis, Dan Green. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You know, I'm, I love X Men stuff, and I love Alan Davis's work on uh, any any anything X related with him well, was great. But I just thought, you know, w w the way Drew Storm and Wolverine, and then you get both of them in the same page. I mean, it's I just yeah. thought it was fantastic, uh, and it even made me go back and just kind of read read their conversation. And it made me even love the page even more because oh, the yeah. writing was so well, well done, and the art was so perfect. I mean, I there's not a lot of Davis Green out there either. Uh, uh, uh not at all. So I dig this page a great deal. I I would love to own it. And, and um, oh, see, I well, did it wasn't even paying attention. Mario, Mario Lasota has this one in his calf. But yeah, doggone it, this thing is. I mean, I love that. Yeah, you know, just the lighting on his face there. I mean, keeping his eyes yeah. dark. I mean, damn. This is good. So, anyway, yeah. I hope it, you know. I I one day would love to own a uh, Alan Davis page from X Men uh, during this era. I you know for my money he's one of the one of the tippy top. I don't want to start talking about top five X Men artists, but <laughs> <laughs> for me he's that he's definitely in there. Yep. No, I don't. I, you know, seeing this page it makes me feel the same way. I mean, I could have put put him in there, uh, and he would have deserved it. Um, yep. And what did Jason say? I should have figured out how to get this page fudge. Yeah, you should have Jason. This, this is a beauty. Uh, then no Simon M. He had this, uh, Paul Pope Batman mm -hmm. uh, piece. I don't know. Anything Paul Pope is always going to be good. So, um, you know, I think I, I just kind of thought this one was kind of interesting just in the, in the layout. I mean, I'll, I, I don't know if all these people in costume or whatever the heck they are. It, it's just or weird. Toys, maybe? I don't know. I mean, I thought it was, I actually thought, but you're right. Maybe it is toys. I thought it was people, but, uh, Paul, Paul just has a weird, you know, he's got a weird sensibility in his art. He always had, even when he first came on the scene yeah. I, I and I liked it. I remember when he first came on the scene, I forget what show I saw him at, maybe like heroes or something. Nobody was talking with him. And he, and, and I, you know, and I, and I, I really liked his art a lot, but you know, when nobody's talking with him, it made me think like, maybe, maybe he's just a little too weird. I didn't want to talk to him. And I regret that because he, I'm sure I could have probably gotten a couple, you know, something really nice from him at the show. 
But well, he gives off that rock star vibe. There was something you know, he looks like Mick Jagger a little bit, and you're like, oh, is he cool or is he? Yeah, exactly. And this was, I don't even know when it was, like 14 years ago. And I just was yeah. like, yeah, I don't know if I can approach this guy and feel confident because I'm, st I didn't have that Chips Clubhouse mini golf, uh, you know, persona where I could walk up to anybody and be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was still the, uh, the shy, easily intimidated, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, guy who ran calf. So anyway, but I love every anything that Paul Pope does, and uh, I feel like he's um, I feel like he's evolving a little bit stylistically. Like this, he's still got like you know, it's still obviously Paul Pope, right? But like, I feel like he's dialing up the level of like realism and dialing down the level of stylization a little bit at this mm. point. Like the last couple pieces I've seen from him, I've been like, oh, this is really, I, you know, I don't want to say reined in as like a you know, a dig that that's not what I'm saying, but like, I feel like he's like honing things a little bit more and they're a little less like wild looking. Cause like his stuff is wild looking on purpose. Right. So that's not a, that's not a dig, but I feel like he's like, like the anatomy's more realistic and, you know, like the faces are, you know, a little less wild and things like that. I, and I mean that in like a, a complimentary way, I think like it's a, it's a very positive thing. Like, I think it makes him more, um, I don't know, wider audience, so mm -hmm. to speak, because like, if you talk to people and I think who really appreciate comic art, I feel like people love Paul Pope or they just don't get it. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, I personally, I think he's amazing. I absolutely love Paul Pope. I love his art. And there you'll run into people though, where they're like, why, you know, like some people just don't get it. And I feel like, some of that like wildness and fluidity and like experimental, you know, stuff that he likes to do does alienate some people. And maybe if he's like kind of coming back a little more towards the middle, like maybe more people will start to appreciate him. That's a, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I can see that too. If you're, uh, if you really are into traditional comic book artwork and, you know, and you're more of say, you know, a, a fan of like the 70s and 80s it's El Busama. So, yeah it's, it's like, <laughs> yes yes i wonder what nick katradas says about oh, paul, paul pope or, or, I'd, uh, yeah, I'd love to get a giant uh, yeah exactly I, you know, give me your take give me your hot take on paul pope and see what they say but no i've always loved his stuff i just think uh you know anybody with a unique vision is uh yeah always intriguing so yes uh very cool piece and uh Simon M, right? It was it was Simon. So we'll see. Yep, Simon got superpowers. He's got a good eye. He's got a mm -hmm. lot of nice pieces in his calf. Uh, then this was the, the the piece I picked for the show graphic. Art Adams. It's like you, you we could pick on Art Adams every week. I just thought this yep. was uh, this was just super. You know, it was really nice. I mean, I, and I I loved you know as much as I like Valkyrie. I I really like all the you know characters in the background. No idea who any of them are. But you know, you got a, a mummy woman and uh, this weird Frankensteinish thing, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought I love the you know the, the characters in the background, and then just the heavy cross hatching as always. Um, yeah, this is just a beautiful piece, and and I don't I don't look at a lot of Art Adam stuff and feel like oh, I want to own that, and even even the, I, but I admire it. But I, I really like this piece. I I would be very happy if uh, if this was like an art you know. A, piece in my collection i i like it that much and it pro probably because it's not it's not x-men it's not like the the stuff that you would want to like be like the you know that's the creme de la creme because he's drawing the most popular characters sure. and everything i mean it's valkyrie and what whomever these characters are uh and it's it's awesome yeah i think what's i i think what i like best about this is when I like arts stuff the most is when he's really able to like cut loose and those monsters or the creatures, like he's, he's definitely having fun there. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. No, this is, uh, and like Valkyrie looks so like pure and like perfect by comparison. I think it's a fun contrast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope. I'm, uh, I'm with you on there. And now who, Oh, this is, Oh, I didn't even realize uh, illustration art collector. Okay, uh, seventeen year member. Oh, it's, it's their anniversary month too. All right, all right, very good. Uh, what do we got next here? Okay, I picked a John Buscema, George Klein Avengers page. This is uh, from issue fifty five, and you know, 
uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I love this era. That of, is great. You know, of, uh, and, and I like Klein inks on it too. I just, just, this piece is just really, really sweet. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, not, not much more to say about it. It's not even a nostalgic pick for me. I just always love this era of, uh, Avengers. So yeah, this is fantastic. You know, look at that. It's, it's kind of cut, cut the heck up. No, you know, I don't remember the pages from this era having the cuts on them like that at the top. Yeah. Um, and even the hole punches, that's just weird to see that too. But either way, uh, very nice piece. Andrew Rollis, congrats. Yeah. Sweet. Inclined to like Klein, says Marcus. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Mickey Anamanthadu. We have this wonderful Ramona Fraden uh, piece. Plastic Man. So cool. Isn't it? I mean, it's, it is. It's so dang nice. I mean, you know, we've just obviously lost uh, uh, Ramona recently. and I, But I think I would have picked this piece anyway. It's just fun. And, you know, it, you got to be heading. Pla you know, plastic man. Kinda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was, you know, as a, as a comic book, I mean, and I, I actually would pick up a couple of these and I don't think I would buy them. I, you know, like I had friends that were, were DC fans and I'd read them and, and at least, you know, these stories were always just, they were comedic, you know, they were meant to be funny. He, you know, he was, he was the Jerry Lewis of the DC world. And, uh, and so I see this and it, and it is, it's funny. I mean, the image makes me, makes me laugh, you know, and, and when I saw it, I was like, that's cool. I didn't even know initially that it was uh, Fraden's work, and then when I saw that, I was like, "All right, I'm going with this one because because uh, it kind of hits all the hits all the fun things about uh, about DC." And it reminded me of my youth looking through books from my friends. So, um, yeah, yeah. Well, he's the um, you know Plaza is the opposite of Mister Fantastic, right? You've got a character who's got kind of a silly power who you're trying to make look like hyper intelligent and heroic and like whatever and plastic man just throws that all out the window mm -hmm. and like that's what's that's what's fun about the character and that's why he's a cool character but like look at the perspective on this that's the that's the coolest part about this page and then like how it really you know leans into his power yes indeed marcus caught it it's dynamite comics <laughs> he's carrying the dynamite it's comics with dynamite Ah, uh, boy, and Rick Welch with the stick of dynamite. All right. Um, but anyways, cool piece. Mickey, uh, yeah. Mickey just keeps adding and adding all the great stuff. So here's a Rip Kirby, Alex Raymond piece. And this is in Ron S's Cap Gallery. Um, it's cool to see so many people, like, you know, picking up nice strip art these days. I mean, we're seeing, I think, I feel like we're seeing more and more really just, you know, collectors who maybe – uh, you know, didn't collect a lot of it before, you know, going towards it. I mean, like Chris Kalaki, you know, he, he, he didn't always love David, right. Right. But it, he discovered it one day. I mean, he has an, one hell of a, of a pop culture, you know, focused collection discovers yeah. that. And then all of a sudden, you know, he, he goes crazy and buys a lot of David, right. And starts publishing cool books. I just think, I, I think it's neat when, uh, you know, back to when we as collectors can look at stuff, like Alex Raymond, early strip art stuff that we weren't. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just from '55. Nobody, I don't think anybody here in the chat was uh, was around in 1955 reading this. But um, I just think it's cool that we can appreciate it, and uh, you know, and because you know, this thing probably it, well, it clearly it's it's fantastic in person. I'm sure of it. Oh, it's gorgeous. And, I mean, uh, I, yeah. I mean, the more I'm looking at it, it's like I want to own an Alex Raymond from the '50s. Yeah, <laughs> and know? I think that that's really like a hopeful place you know a mm -hmm. hopeful thing to think about in the hobby is that like we're all still growing in our appreciation of the medium and that does lead you to new artists and sometimes those new artists were active in 1955 mm -hmm. right but if you really get like zapped by something and you're like oh my god this is gorgeous like you can go down this Chris Kalaki rabbit hole and like this becomes your focus. And I think that's an awesome thing. That's a beautiful thing about this hobby. Mm -hmm. Without question. Yeah. We, uh, uh, yeah. No, I, anyway, I love strip art. I love seeing more of it on the site. And, uh, I'm, you know, Ron asked, I mean, he maybe he has a, I'm kind of curious now. Does Ron have a lot of, uh, strip art in his calf? Just want to, I'm going to do a real quick check just to see. What do we got here? Da, 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 da. Wow, he does. Look at that. 247 pieces of strip art. I had no idea. I mean, Maybe. thank God he has 271 pieces of interior art, or or I'd feel like a true dummy here. 
All right. He has, <laughs> he has a lot of strip art. Wow. He's got gifts out the wazoo. All right. I'm going to, I'm actually going to save this and, and just see everything that he's collected over the years. Man. Oh, man. Oh, he's, look at, he's got a, uh, he's got a great Sky Masters by Kirby and Wood. Of That's, course. I've all, it's on my list, man. I, I really have to get one. Well, now, now I do feel silly, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to look later. Everybody else should too. Well, you're no longer ignorant, Bill. <laughs> put, it, put it that way. That, that you're is ignorant. So now you're not. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So here we have a Matt Wagner. What was this used for? It's a trade paperback cover uh, from Mage. This is uh, from 2004. I mean, I don't know. It, Iconic. It is. It's just, it's, it's, I, I couldn't, couldn't pass this one by. I didn't know why you didn't pick this one. I picked Matt Wagner in the like, like the last two or three weeks, I think. And so I try not to, you know, go to the well too often. All right. Well, this is in color. It's not, it wasn't black and white, like whatever else. You pick. But, uh, but yeah, anyways, I mean, this is, we all looked at comics differently when we were seeing stuff like this, where, you know, just painted covers. I mean, this is when, you know, Chaikin's doing American flag, the elementals are coming out. We're getting cool graphic format books from DC. Uh, but, but, uh, Wagner's work just always stood out, you know, in an artistic way that mm -hmm. um, that even like the Willingham stuff, which I loved, nothing really felt quite like what Matt was doing back then. And I, I look at this and it reminds me of everything that I that I really loved about uh, Mage and it, just his his drawing style. And uh, yeah. it's it's just absolutely beautiful and stands alone as like so, so one of the more unique uh, uh approaches to comics and storytelling and color and everything and you know so, and, and i mentioned yeah you know, just mentioned the color you know reminding me of the stuff that uh that jim warden was selling those those colored you know those colored pieces that mm -hmm. he wagner was always really focused on that and yep. and it shows in here these are odd colors to you know that orange orangey brown in the background yeah, but, the umber yeah yeah it, but it works i mean it works really mm -hmm. well and you can contrast it to that Engelhart curvy cover that was just bright and popping you know, that's what's supposed to sell. That's what's supposed to like look great on the shelf. And, and Wagner, he just, you know, he's got the, he's got that lime green going on there. But other than that, I mean, this is a very sedate color palette and it works. So, yeah, it's uh it's also, I mean, it's a time in comics that like a lot of us remember fondly. And like, this is like, I said, iconic, like this is an iconic image that like essentially, you know, sums up the series in one image. And for fans of Mage, like this is, this is as good as you can get. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, but who was the owner of this one? I didn't. Oh, JD. That's right. Um, anyway, wow. This is this is uh, unbelievable. I can't like it twice. Yeah, special. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? So, uh, Jose, oh, I almost picked this. I love this page. <laughs> is this thing? This is so freaking awesome. I mean, yeah. and I'm not familiar with Jose Ortiz in 1986, neither am I. Page, but you know, Rogue Trooper. I don't even know what the hell's going on in here. These it, it, Marcus is gonna, you know, is gonna talk about, uh, you know, well, some Sean Chen art or something like that in a minute. But the thing is, I just think this is. I mean, the con the contrast in this piece is what grabbed me. The depth. It, and exactly. Right? I, yeah. I mean, everything. I I was just blown away when I saw this. And this is yeah. uh, da Daniel Ashton's cap gallery, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, collects uh, you know mostly UK related artwork. But man, I, I I don't know anything about this book. I don't even care to. I mean, I I just love the artwork in it. Those first two panels alone, in which are weird. Uh, mm -hmm. I think. You know, just because you're getting that that the, that second panel, it's all. This is almost. You know, we talked about the Kubert second panel with the with the with yeah. the, uh, the evil guy. I look yeah. at that. It, I, this thing draws me in for the exact same reason. But yeah. uh, but boy, I love this page. I but those bottom two panels, the separation that he gets mm. is almost seems artificial. Yeah, yeah. It seems like he drew on like an overlay or something, and there's literal physical separation between the two layers of, you know, but there isn't, it's just that effectively drawn. Yeah. That's just gosh. Yeah. I love this piece. I mean, I just have to click on the name now just to see how many pieces by Jose Ortiz are on calf. Uh, not a whole lot. We got 113. Yeah. I'm just there not might, There might also be more than one Jose Ortiz that's drawing comics too. Uh, that's true too. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm, 
I'm going to have to do a little research. But clearly, there's some pieces for sale, too, uh, by uh, the Arte Fum Fumetto. Well, uh, if they're that high quality, I mean, huh? I would oh, be a that cool. Yep. Interesting. Well, anyway, I'm going to I'm going to do a little research because uh, I think that guy's art is fantastic. Yeah, very cool. I and that one was, you know, so in the cart too at, at one point and I was like, ah, I think I picked 2000 AD last week or the week before, so I'll stay away from British comics too. Well, uh I understand. So what we got the last piece, the James Heron piece, uh Daryl mm -hmm. R. Uh I, you know, I like Heron stuff a lot and I'm not familiar with this is Rumble number 1. And, you know, I don't know uh, anything about it, but I don't know. I love the I I just I'm assuming it was it a cover, right? Oh uh, yeah, it was a cover, number one cover. Um, I don't know. It's just whatever it is. It, it, it's in, it's intriguing to me. Yeah, uh, make me. You, you would actually probably really like Rumble, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's it, it's weird. It's uh, he's a scarecrow god, and you know you like Evil Dead. It's not right. un, It's not unlike that genre. Okay. Plus, it's James Heron. That uh, it has that going for it. Then I mean, if it, I, I didn't know if Heron only did the cover, so the interiors are by James as well. Yep. All right. Well, I think I'm going to have to. Yeah, check it out. It's a I it's will. it's a very fun book, and the art is mind boggling. I'm making a note of it. I'll, I assume was it a multi issue thing or the trades? Oh out? yeah, it ran for a long time. Oh, okay, cool. Well yep. then, uh, uh, perfect. But yeah, I thought I just I, I love uh, I love Heron's work anyway, and uh, it, uh, anything. But I thought this was nice, and it's funny. It kind of it, it's a it's almost similar to the Art Adams. I mean, the you know just the crazy mm -hmm. character, and you know there's there's a level of freedom there with uh, you, you know again you can tell this James probably really enjoyed drawing this character. So yeah, yeah. created him. So there you go. More so yeah. the re reason, and uh, so Daryl R. Daryl Daryl he's uh, he's he's got a very eclectic collection but uh he does all the time yep all right well there we go we he's got our buying, we got, he keeps buying bernie wrights in art which is upsetting to me but uh i didn't i you know that's funny because i i don't think i've seen any rights and stuff that he's picked up maybe i've just he's got rights and punisher rights and batman i mean he's uh, yeah between well, that and snapping up all the Sean Gordon Murphy Azrael pages, he's he's really become my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, uh, it's, he's a good dude. Yes, he is. He definitely is. Um, well, cool. We made it, man, and, and we're under three hours. Not feel, bad. Not bad at all. So, uh, so I'm going to test out that bourbon this weekend. I'll let you know what I think of it. I, I, right. I, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure it's great. I mean, if. Uh, Corey's wife works there and won't she, be sad. Uh, no, no, I probably won't. Uh, but I always try to avoid like the name brands. I've tried, I, I don't know why, mm. but Maker's Mark, I, I could, I might be sold. So, um, all right. Well, enjoy your weekend, man. I think, uh, I, I think, uh, what do we got planned? Maureen and I were going to, we got some, we, I actually planted or, an orchard, yes, or last weekend. She had oh, bought, cool. she bought four apple trees, two peach trees, and, uh, two pear trees so i had to run irrigation and yeah and they're still alive they're still alive i didn't okay. care and uh, i thought everybody just grew citrus down there well you know i wanted to it's it's funny peter rowe when we did the get together here in uh you know february of last year peter rowe had mm -hmm. a friend who uh, who's from florida uh who said oh you gotta you gotta grow uh citrus right mm -hmm. so he actually sent me a bag of seeds from a tree in his yard now okay. Uh, I planted them, uh, you know, uh, and the thing is, I actually have, uh, so I have one of his trees that's actually growing because I, uh, every, I had like 50 seeds, only one of them came up wow. and it's, uh, it's almost about a foot tall right now. So I think it's, it's probably years away from getting any citrus oh, on yeah. it, but, uh, you know, at least it's, uh, it's still out there. Maureen really wanted to do that. Uh, but I don't know why the place we went to this organic farm and they had mm -hmm. everything, but uh you know there were no oranges there were no tangerines it was hmm. all pears plums apples and um okay peaches so you know you get what you get those aren't citrus 
Marcus. Marcus, Ever. maybe I should have had Ever you. Vigilant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well, listen, everybody, as always, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, it's, you know, we have a good time on here talking about art, but uh, Chris, thank you. You know, it's uh, you, you are, you, 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 you and I together, I think we, 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 cover all the bases every week i think everybody is uh enjoys hearing our our, our spiel <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that thank you bill not a problem man. well you have a good night and everybody listen thank you for hanging with us and uh i've got tomorrow off but don't forget two shows on saturday 2 p.m with brian hitch 9 p.m with ziggy and the next comic art crew <laughs> and uh, i guarantee you a good time in both of those shows have a wonderful evening and i'll see you again soon